very select little group now and again De Luca's never afraid to have a go at the front he's constantly seen at the front that's our television commentating duo the Italian version David Cassani yes a little bit of support from the crowd well he's onto the flatter part of uh, the race here and he looks over his shoulder he should realize that that group is not going to chase him too much because he's got two teammates in there they'll just sit on the group and wait to see whether or not the other riders Joachim Rodriguez for one takes up the pacemaking behind him well, the way this guy's flown away from the group there and he looks so fresh I can't see anybody stopping him winning two stages in a row right now and by the end of this day he will have sealed the king of the mountains he's won every major climb he's bagged the points today that's what he's been looking for he wanted to dominate this part of the the Giro get himself a, an unassailable lead in the king of the mountains classification and I'm not sure he was really uh, considering pushing himself so high up in the overall standings. But now, with the way he's riding, he's actually starting to become a little bit of a threat to the major contenders. Under the 10 kilometers to go, all uphill. And still got a good tempo. This is the lower slopes of the Fadaya, and it's not too difficult. It all depends uh, now, really, the position of Emmanuel Seller. It all depends on how they race, I think, Phil, in this group behind. We've got a lot of big names and they will, I think, want to try and put uh, Alberto Contador into difficulty. Although Alberto Contador is the best of the rest at the start of the day, I think they will all take a little bit of interest in the fact that he was dropped on the final acceleration up towards the finish yesterday. And if they see that as some kind of weakness, because of his time trialling ability, they may well try and get rid of him on this climb. And if they race like that, that certainly will wipe away the advantage of Emmanuel Seller. Yeah, well, they've got to, really, because if he does take the lead, tomorrow's individual time trial has a terrific advantage starting last man. The time is being taken on this 10 kilometres to go gantry, and already he's pulled the best part of a minute off the erstwhile breakaways. 52 seconds the gap. Be interested to see how far back the bunch are now. They're not that far behind. Because they're through the village at the bottom. This is uh, Guinea Petrov who was slipping off the back there for Team uh, Tinkoff. Tinkoff. Yeah. And that's an indication that it's starting to get just a little bit tough. De Luca there, followed by Pelizzotti. Look at that face. This is going to be an attacking ride right up to the finish here. De Luca's being led onto it by Specialetti. Pelizzotti still going with well. Rico in the white jersey. That's Contador he is. Not looking Grimacing. very comfortable. He does not look like uh, the big Contador of the month of July last year. Denny Menchov, Iglinski, Jürgen Vandenbroek. He's going to ride himself high up in the overall standings in the Giro d'Italia this year. Well, he's having a very good tour. This is decisive. Menchov just in front of him. There's the little split of the three leading groups. Well, group not quite the word for the man at the front. The clock is still counting when they come under that 10 kilometer gantry. So about 52 seconds to the four chases. And uh, it's gone over two minutes now, so there's a bit of work to be done here over the last 10 kilometers. Special Specialetti was doing an incredible job there. This man looks very calm and collected. I wonder if he's heard the news about his teammate, that Leonardo Pipoli, who uh, mm. stopped at the side of the road and has been evacuated to hospital with a suspected broken collarbone, and that will put him out for a few months. Well, usually three weeks, but it uh, depends how well you can get back. Depends how bad the break is, of course, if that's what it is. This is the leading chase group now, group three on the road, still looking for that banner. It's going up towards, there it is. So it's about 2.35. Well, since the start of the climb, he's actually extended his advantage over this group. As you can see, Specialetti doing an incredible job, just as he did the day before. That's him on the front in the white jersey of LPR. Now, 2.35, but it's only about 1.40 behind those four riders, and they might have a difficult escape on their hands here. While well, the pink jersey's in desperate way. I don't know where we've gone to find this, because well, he bit, wasn't in that group. A little bit further down the slopes, I think it's... Uh, a lonely day for him today because he knows that his team have got uh, a plan and that plan is to put Danilo De Luca a little bit higher in the overall classification. It's tough when you're uh, a domestique, it's tough when you're the overall leader of a race like the Giro d'Italia knowing that your team can't help you on a day like this because they've got something else to do. Well I have to say so far wearing the pink jersey has not done the riders too much of a kindness because they've really struggled to hang on to it and that gap says it all. 6.28 to the leader and puts him about 4.28 behind Contador. Contador can now think of pink. Well, he can think of pink, but he's got to think about what are the other riders in this group going to do. A silent killer in the group is this man, Denny Menchov. He put everybody into difficulty yesterday because he was the best of the finishers of that leading group to the top of the climb. And a lot of people 
regarded him as a pre-race Giro d'Italia winner. 53 seconds between Sella now and the group of riders he was with. 2.35 to the group here with Alberto Contador. One and three quarters to bring him back at least the four chasers by that chase group. This is the man who's setting the pace and he's, uh, he's telling us he's going to win the stage. A little bit of information, two stage wins in the Giro. We've seen one already, pro since 2004 and about to be uh, this year's King of the Mountains, the way he's riding, as well as a two-time stage winner, at least. Tomorrow, it's a mountain time trial, a very difficult one as well, to the Plan de Coronas. The rest day will be welcome after that, and then we've got the running Wednesday through Sunday for the final stages. Just looking here at the work that's been done, it's all really being left up to the rider from Liquigas to do the pacemaking. No work will be done by Fortunato, Belliani or Julio Perez at all, and I think Joachim Rodriguez is probably not in one of his best days. Well, we're under another banner there. I'm not too sure whether it was a distance banner, but we didn't see what it said. Contador's looking a little bit better, Paul, and they're all riding on the big chain wheel. It's, it's, uh, have they just come inside? They've just come inside now, all of them. Well, this is the part where the uh, climb starts to get that little bit steeper. Yeah. I have a fear, just looking at that rider from Liquigas in the break, I think that was Vicente Nibali. Now, he's a rider who could uh, take advantage of a breakaway like this. It's right up overall. And I think that's probably, Phil, why he's riding. Look at these beautiful gorges. Well, Pelazotti's in the break, and you're right, Nibali is in that group. And I think that's the only two of Liquigas. I don't suppose there's much chance of Daniela Bernati being there. Uh, no, not on a day like this. <laughs> He'll be with all of the sprinters. 26th overall for uh, Emmanuel Seller. He's still looking for a fair amount of time and they uh, can't really afford to give him too much advantage because he's slowly but surely pulling himself up in the overall classification and still that face, fixed face of Daniel De Luca in that group there, just wondering and waiting. He, he will know this climb. Most of these riders have been around here and uh, checked out this course, apart from, of course, Alberto Contador, who didn't know he was riding. That's Silvestri Smid in yes, the Lampre jersey there. He's uh, basically doing all of the work for Marzio Brusagin. Yes, Brusagin survives through these mountains. He's looking to a high finish. Mind you, tomorrow, the mountain time trial, he won't be his usual dominating self, I don't think, in the time trial tomorrow, but he's got the ability more than most to hold it. The Marmolada on the Banza, that's the other name for the Fedaya. Six and a half kilometres to go to the finisher. Amazing to think this man, there's Levi Leipheimer. Where's that? He slipped through the back. I don't think Leipheimer is in the group because I had a feeling Alberto Contador was uh, pretty much on his own there in that group. This is with Paolo Salvadelli. I think this is a group off the back of the main challengers. And I think that was also Andreas Cloden. Yes, it is. Yeah. So what has happened up front is, in fact, Alberto Contador, like a couple of the other riders and the major contenders, have become isolated on this big mountain stage. These are the four chasers left by Sella. Rodriguez setting the pace, champion of Spain. They can't be that far ahead of that tempo group that's coming up behind, maybe a minute. And it's getting a little bit narrow and a little bit steeper. It's a little bit complicated for the helicopter to get in there as well. Oh, it's a beautiful scene, that. As the snows turn to water, that's a lovely cascade. This as well, they've got somewhere for the water to go, rather wet. Terrible road here as well as uh, Emmanuel Seller seemingly trying to repeat the feat of yesterday and getting himself a victory and he's looking here now at the possibility of back-to-back uh, -back wins in the mountains and that would be a phenomenal performance. Schmidt still setting the pace for Lamprey here. Bruce Eugene is still in this group so he's playing the faithful teammate. You can see Bruce Eugene, centre of the line, same colours of course. Cardenas at the back as well having a slightly better day for uh, Team Barlow World, the South African squad. But LPR really have turned out to be the solid team, I think, in the Giro d'Italia. They came here with one aim, and that was to get Danilo De Luca a repeat win. And if he wants to do that, he's going to have to do something on a stage like today. Let's look at the way this guy attacks this. And the road surface is atrocious, but it catches the winter up here, of course. The snows are cleared now as he continues to ascend. There's Rodriguez. You can see the difference in the speed. These four are definitely slowing down. No signs of the road ahead. Eight minutes to Basicio from Sella. And so we're looking at about six minutes the advantage Contador now. So there's going to be some big gaps in the overall tonight as well. Some huge gaps in the overall and uh, bigger gaps will probably appear on the run up to the summit of the 
Paso Fadaya because I have a feeling we will have a little bit of a move by Danilo De Luca here today. He really looks as if he's got the game head on. There's Emmanuel Seller on the left-hand side, a minute and 45 yeah. seconds. Now they're not really, they're still not really chasing him as we look at this incredible waterfall that the riders uh, just went by a few moments ago. They're not chasing him, so Seller is still not really regarded as an overall contender. Well, they're dropping back, and he's added a minute since he started this climb to that chasing group of four by a hatful of seconds, so it means to me that surely the chase behind is pulling those four riders back. But they're not pulling this man back. He just relishes these climbs, and he's really racing them. Back, meanwhile, back at the waterfall. Well, it's a couple of hundred it's meters down there. spectacular, isn't it? It really is. The helicopter pilot doing a phenomenal job here. That's the uh, chasing group of four riders. And it's Nibali in that group who's doing the majority of the pacemaking. He was looking at a breakaway group by this fill, I think, to maybe try and create the surprise and uh, grab the Malia Rosa on a day like this. Seller, 26 overall, 7 minutes 33 seconds down. But that was on Bosicio. And what he's doing now, he's starting to threaten the position of riders like Contador and Danilo De Luca. Well, he was pretty happy when he won yesterday. And goodness knows how he'll react when he wins again today because I can't see him not winning now. He's only got about 20-odd minutes to race to the finish, albeit uphill. But look at the cars and the people here as we head into the village halfway up the climb. Four minutes and four hours and 30 minutes here in the saddle for these riders. He's got himself a pretty solid advantage. Looks like Joachim Rodriguez has decided to come to the front of Fraction. You get an idea, the way this man is styling on his bike here, it gives you an indication of just how difficult this ascent is up to the summit of the Fedaya. It's a very tough climb up here, and this man, I don't know how he recovered overnight because uh, he had an incredible raid through the mountains yesterday, and he's almost here on a, a repeat performance. And the crowd are just willing him on. Tremendous atmosphere on the climb. His face just shows no effort at all. He's a true climber. Just keeps his rhythm and he senses it slowing. He jumps out the saddle, revs it up, sits down again. There's the crowd. And that's all he hears now. With every turn of those pedal revs, he is inching closer to the finishing line. One of the revered climbs of the Giro d'Italia. Oops, the camera's pulling back. Are we going to see the four chasers? If we are, they are losing a lot of ground. More than a minute back to the four chasers. The helicopter's uh, gone right back to the hairpin bend, and here they come. And we've left them. We didn't even get a chance to identify them, but I think there's still four riders there. This man is certainly proving to be one of the great climbers of the future. Number 61, Emmanuel Seller, slipping back. Schmitz has done his job, and I think he's going to hang on now. It's up to Bruce Eugene to stay in there. And there's Jens Voigt over on the left-hand side. Now, Jens Voigt was in the early morning breakaway, and he's managed to survive, and he's probably looking here and saying to himself, what am I doing with the leaders of the Giro d'Italia? But he is a great character, Jens. You can see the, the battling style, and here he is riding in the mountains in the group with Alberto Contador. This is Rodriguez down there at the moment, I think it was, and yeah, uh, champion of Spain and Perez. And in fact, they've so uh, they distanced. Split. Yeah, they're they distanced, are in trouble here. They've distanced Nibali there. Yeah. And so his hopes of the Malia Rosa slowly disappearing. Yes, and that group, I think, is going to probably sweep them up. This is the five kilometres, so he's half the distance now. That's when we saw was ten. And he's still got himself going well. The rain has started again, light drizzle at the moment. It might get heavy as we climb up to the summit, though. Well, it's a strange uh, style this man has, but it really does work when we get into the big mountain passes. He's out of the saddle, back in the saddle, just trying to keep the pace going forward. He's not riding very much more than 10 or 12 miles an hour on a climb like this. Vinci Bousegin. So the, all of the supporters, all of the Tifosi, as they call them here in Italy, are out to support their own riders on what are starting to really be the crucial stages. A time check there on the right-hand side, 28 seconds since he went through the five-kilometre banner. We'll get a chance to see just exactly what the race situation is. But he doesn't yet really feel, seem to be losing any time on the men at the back, although Cardenas is. Uh oh he's just on hitch there. So Felix is finding the going, and Jens is going as well, I think. The tempo is relentless at the front here. They must be picking up. That clock is counting still on the five kilometres to go, but I'm not sure whether the four chases have gone through or not, because this clock is on this group. There's Matty Lloyd. He's really learning how to get himself over the big mountain passes in a race like the Giro d'Italia. 
in a couple of years' time, we should see him uh, vying for a top place overall in the Tour de France. Senses this slowing again out of the saddle. That's very nice of him. Thank you very much. A minute and 20 seconds still. And we've lost contact with the four chasers, but I think the four chasers have split into two and two. And there's still really not been very much of a reaction from the main field. I think we've gone back to the four. No, we've gone back to the main group here. This is no, this is the Cloden this is the group. group behind the main group. Yeah, Cloden, yeah. Salvadelli, uh, Levi Leipheimer. Has he got back? No, this is the group that's uh, behind the this group the of Alberto group. Contador, yeah. third group on the road. Well, this has been quite a decisive day, uh, apart from the winner, which is going to be the same as yesterday. Again, it's been a, a real challenge amongst the big boys, and Contador looks to be up for this. Well, if you want a split screen, we've got four for you here this afternoon. Uh, Seller, top left hand. The chasing group of three with Rodriguez, uh, right hand. Down at the bottom, the big group of favourites with Alberto Contador and Danilo De Luca. And over on the right hand side was the Andreas Cloden group, the fourth group on the road. The image of the Tifosi doing what they do best, shouting in the ears of a race leader in the Giro d'Italia. Ah, An acceleration from Pelazotti. There needs to be a reaction. And it's coming from Danilo De Luca there in the white jersey, uh, not to confuse uh, of the yellow jersey normally of Sonia Duval is Ricardo Rico. And he looks very comfortable riding across the gap here. Well, Pelazotti uh, was looking on his face here. That was attempted just to test to see how they're all feeling. De Luca's made a little bit of a meal of it, but he's closed the gap down nicely. Gilberto Simone in the white jersey with the blue stripes down the side and has put one or two riders into difficulty here. Yes, and that'll be Schmidt, I think. I don't think it's Bruce Jr. It's got his style of riding, I must say. I think it is Bruce Jr. Well, if it back was, there. that's that's not good news because uh, he'll lose his top overall position. Yeah? Is Bruce Jr. Another attack now. This is the one that we hope is going to be a little bit more decisive by Franco Pelizzotti. Looking over his shoulder to see if everybody, anybody's managed to grapple onto his slipstream. Boy, he's... Uh, I suppose he's really working hard out there today, and that's a nice little gap bridging. This looks like it's Domenico Possovivo again from Group Navagari, who's come up to Pelazzotti now. Well, I've got to tell you, I, I don't know anything at all about this bike ride, and I don't think I've ever really uttered his name before. Nope. He's uh, one of the riders from Team Navagari, who's uh, pretty much on the way up. Navagari is a team that is riding currently on all fronts. They've got their man, Emmanuel Seller, off the front end of the main field, and there are two other riders in between. One of those is uh, Julio Perez, the other one is Fortunato Baleani. So Simone is setting the pace making. It was definitely Bruce Jean. And Phil, it looks mm. to me as if, no, I thought for a moment it was Contador going off the back, but in fact it was Maxime Iglinski, yeah. the Kazakhstan champion from Team Astana. And he's just suffering trying to stay in contact. Next group on the road is this group, a little bit further back, and this is the group with Andreas Cloden. And he looks as though he's trying to get rid of everybody with him here and ride by himself. There's only eight left in that very select group up front. So the Fadai is having a say, and are they bringing back the breakaway there? Well, that was... Uh, no, that was uh, Pelazotti still. Oh, no, that's right. They're coming up to Pelazotti and uh, Podsto Vivo. And that's Ricardo Rico making the effort to nail it all back, followed by Menchov, followed by Contador, followed by Gilberto Simoni. 33 to the Contador group, so Emmanuel Seller is still extending that advantage. He is, and that's going to put him up into a nice position by the end of the day. He was seven minutes down, I remember he's basing his gaps on Contador now. Just over seven minutes down on Contador, he's uh, cutting off almost half of his overnight disadvantage. So uh, I think Contador now is the next man in pink with a week to go, so he's going to put a lot of pressure on his team. Bruce Jean now, he can just see the group that he was with in front of him at number 111, third overall at the start of the day. Now, if these riders are uh, bearing in mind that there's an upcoming mountain time trial, they may want to put a little bit of time between themselves and Marcio Bruce Jean because he is a very good time trialist, fourth overall for Ricardo Rico over on the right. Well, now this is the creme de la creme. Menchov looks across at Rico. Rico looked across at Contador. There's only one big surprise, and that's him there, and that's Domenico Pozzovivo. Pelazzotti is riding well above himself in this year's Giro d'Italia and riding very well, race leader as well for a while. He's always promised to be a great star in the Giro d'Italia. A number of years ago, they thought he was uh, the big star of the future. He's uh, moved around a little bit, trying to find that form. Look how carefully Denny Menchov rode himself back into this group. 
Contador looks under pressure. He's looking over. Attack. Yeah, Rico. Rico with a rapid acceleration to see who can follow. And if they all follow, he'll probably ease up again. But that Pozzovido, no problem at all to react. And uh, Rico looks over his shoulder. He split the breakaway here. But Contador, as calm as you like and pedalling a very nice low gear, has gone forward with him. Well, all Cont Contador doesn't actually have to do anything dramatic because uh, I think he will pull an advantage for the mountain time trial. What he has to do is really keep a very close eye on the, the climbers. Gilberto Simone in a little bit of difficulty. Mm. He's uh, dreaming of a, another top five finish in the Giro d'Italia. And the man who's actually been caught out there by the acceleration, number one, Danilo De Luca, slowly clawing his way back to the group. He didn't have the acceleration, uh, but he's kept his head. He hasn't panicked. And Rico, when he saw he hadn't got rid of Contador, I mentioned. He's going again. He eased up, but you're right, this is the way to do it. You've got to keep on hitting them until you hopefully open the gap. That's yes. Nibali who's just come back, so he was up with the leader, so they started to eat into that breakaway. Oh, Nibali back in the fold. Uh, this is confirmation of the group Contador, Posavivo, Pelizotti, Menchov and Rico, and it's Rico who is the man on the front. Three, six riders. Where's the white jersey? Is the best young rider. Strangely enough, uh, starting to get rid of his uh, former teammate, Gilberto Simone. There's a move going by uh, Pozzovivo. Well, this young man is uh, freezing our pitches. He shocked everybody. Domenico Pozzovivo. I don't think they're going to chase him because I don't they think... Won't uh, mark him, I don't think. ...any of the riders in this group regard him as a man uh, likely to create uh, any difficulty in the overall classification. In fact, he's just riding across to his teammate. That's why he made the move there. That's Fortunato Baleano. And he's seen his teammate coming across there, and that's always a good move. You can use your teammate as a launch pad. Baleani will lift up the pace a, a fraction here for two or three hundred metres if he can to try and give the advantage to his teammate Podzovivo. Meanwhile, back with the worker, and that's what he looks like right now as he gives every effort to the climb. Seller is not quite as smooth as he was yesterday. There's no doubt this is hurting him now, but he is still pulling away from the group because they've slowed again, you see. Well, Nibali now is going to try and do a little bit of pacemaking for his teammate Pelizotti, give him a little bit of a break. That's uh, the law of the mountains. When you get picked up and you've been in a, an early breakaway like that, so you have to look around and see what the race situation is. Rico's going again. Attack number three by the Cobra as he strikes for a third time. And he just keeps on checking who's coming with him, so he's still holding something in reserve here. This is his third attack, but it's not his final one. Menchoff manages to get back. Contador, he just seems to dance on those pedals. He has such a relaxed appearance on his bike. Well, I think he's pretty much on the defensive, Phil. I this think is, so. This is not the Contador of uh, July last year when he could uh, dance away from anybody on the big mountain passes. He may well be just a little bit short in his preparation. There Rodriguez. is Joachim Rodriguez. He's been back in the fold. They're passing all of these riders one by one. I haven't seen uh, Julio Perez. He may still have survived. But I say for Contador... In fact, Contador is not having a good day here, Phil. He's in difficulty there. Well, we're getting up amongst the start of the ski stations here now. An indication we're heading up. Uh, Menchov is in trouble. He's falling back. So Denny Menchov, this third attack by Rico has been sustained. And it looks as though... He's beginning to get the best of it. Now, as far as I know, Possevivo is still in front here. I don't think he's come back. Is, is he still with Fortuna Valiani? I think he may well be still off the front there. A little bit confusing in the mountains, as it talk. always is. Uh, Simone's riding himself back into here. But there you can see Alberto Contador, Phil, is in difficulty on this climb. And I'm, I'm not really surprised because I don't think he was expecting to ride the full three weeks of the Giro d'Italia this year. I thought he was riding himself in, uh, but he's... Either way, if he keeps Rico in his sights, then he will pull on the pink jersey tomorrow. But he's got to keep Rico in his sights because Rico is just about a minute behind him overall. Menchov now getting into his rhythm and he's trying to claw back the young Italian, the best young rider in the Giro d'Italia. Left-hand side, the best climber in the Giro d'Italia, Emmanuel Seller, looking over his shoulder, trying to get some idea of what sort of advantage he's got. Well, the last official time check we got, it was up to three minutes advantage over the group of Alberto Contador, and I suppose we should say now, the group of Ricardo Rico. I would have thought that at least the forward uh, breakaway is now chasing down Seller. They won't catch it, but they might close the gap a little bit. He's still looking very smooth, had no more kilometre signs since the five to go, but we must be getting very close to the top of the climb now. He's puffing and blowing, he's having a good hard look down the mountain there to see if he can see any cars, any riders. 
Well, he'll take a lot of confidence in that because he won't see them. Rico trying to hammer home the nail in the coffin of the rest of them and become the challenger for Contador. Contador has been joined now by Menchov and he's grateful for the following wheel. Well, Contador, look at the way he's sitting right on the front of his saddle. He really is under a little bit of pressure, but he's a man of he's great courage. Panicking. He's not panicking and he needn't panic because he knows uh, with two kilometers to go for Emmanuel Seller, He's got to keep himself in this bike race. He doesn't want to push himself into the red zone, and he can build on his advantage if he goes into the uh, individual mountain time trial. That's where I think he will start to open up the gaps, but he's not enjoying this at all. No, he'll be glad when it's over, but he knows how to suffer. Even champions suffer, you know, and Contador is showing himself to be a big champion here. I think he is coming into some good form. It's been a hard week for him, though, that's for sure. Roberto Simone uh, and Slow Danilo De Luki. De Luca They're starting to uh, drag themselves back into this group. You can see that Simone is using all of the experience of a very long career not to panic, to ride himself up these climbs at his own personal rhythm, which seems to be a rhythm that's saving Danilo De Luca here, who was dropped a little bit earlier on. One and a half kilometers to go to the finish. And uh, Eduardo Sella, for the second time in his many days, He's proving to be a real king of the mountains. King of the Alps, now king of the Dolomites. And almost unassailable as king of the mountains in the Giro. Well, Rico has gone here, Phil, and I'm not sure whether he's second or third on the road at the moment because it's always a little bit confusing in the mountains. Menchov is on the defensive. He's riding the tempo, and all that Alberto Contador can do is just sit there. And he's getting a fresh set of legs alongside him every 50 metres to keep on shouting him home. It's very entertaining to have that cowbell in your ears when you're winning a stage of the Giro. De Luca dropping off the wheel there of Gilberto Simone. He's obviously not having a great day. His face looked good at the start. It looked like he was... Well, in fact, I say that. He's, he's riding himself his up to this group. Yes, yeah. there is Menchov and Contador. Simone's halfway across the gap. And De Luca, again, like a lot of these riders today, Phil, are really riding on sheer guts and courage. Absolutely. And how often have we seen that with Danilo De Luca? Never seems to be quite on top of it, and yet he never, ever gives up. And he's forcing himself back into this. Rico is doing a great ride. As far as we know, Domen Domenenko Pozzovivo is in front of him. Uh, I'm not sure where Fortuano Balion is. Uh, but Rico is certainly riding well and he's getting time over Contador, which is his object right now. Time over Contador could mean a pink jersey in a day or so's time. Tomorrow it's the individual time trial to the Plan de Coronas. And that is going to be a tough one and could be decisive on the eve of the second rest day. Well, De Luca's got himself back onto the wheel of uh, Gilberto Simone there and still Menchov using a slightly bigger gear than Alberto Contador is trying to see whether or not he can pull back Ricardo Rico, who I think everybody now is starting to see as a possible winner of the Giro d'Italia. He's a young rider who's on his way up to the top, and here he's uh, making no bones about this climb, and he knows this is the most important moment to try and put time between himself and everybody. I need a drink. Well, uh, No, he doesn't. He's, he's fed up now. They're getting a little bit too boisterous up on the top of the mountain, screaming down his ears, trying to touch him. All he wants to do is concentrate and reach the finish. Well, he's in the safety now of the barriers. He's not much more than one and a half kilometres to go to the finish. A quick chat uh, on the push to talk button to the team manager in the car behind. He wants to know who's chasing and how far behind they are. Well, that's great riding by both Gilbert Simone and Danilo De Luca. They've rejoined Contador and Menchov. That means they're riding at the limits right now as these two have come up like that. So there's four and there's two rides ahead and then we get to Sella and Sella won't be caught now. Oh, look at, did you see there he is. Alberto Contador? He What's was that, one kilometre to go? One kilometre to go. Contador, I've never seen him all over his machine as he was back there, Phil. He's really not enjoying the Giro d'Italia at the moment. However, Emmanuel Sella is. As we get a chance here to look back, we may well just see where the front end of that group is and how far behind Ricardo Rico is. First over all of the climbs today and capping it off with a great victory for the second day in succession. Rico knows with every turn of those pedals he is gaining perhaps a second over Alberto Contador. It probably won't be enough today, but tomorrow, who knows, he could be in the pink jersey. That's the important thing for him today. He needs to put time between himself and these riders. And where is Contador here? As he split off the back, I think the way the cameras are running ahead, he has. Yes, he has. I think he's been displaced. No, he's, no, he's gone off the front. 
and there's no reaction from this group at all to Contador and that's a rider of pure class it knows he's got to make a move here because his most dangerous rival Ricardo Rico is gaining time well three minutes and six seconds is the time between the leader of the race Emmanuel Sella and Ricardo Rico but I think Rico will be eating into that advantage right now I have to say Phil I think Alberto Contador is riding on only one thing and that is absolute courage yep. he looked dreadful on his bike it looked like he was suffering and then all of a sudden he realized how important it was maybe he got the nod from Johan Brunil now's the time to go if you can I think you're absolutely right and this has been a superb effort I mean we know that De Luca's absolutely on 110 percent effort here so too Simone so it was a matter of Contador, if he wanted to gain time or hold his losses, he had to leave the others behind. As you can see, the roads are damp up here. There's not much rain, if any, coming down right now. There is Contador. I'm just wondering whether he soon will be in amongst the barriers. We've never seen uh, Bozzavivo, but they are saying he's up there, but goodness knows where he is. We'll see him at the finish. Well, I think with the limited number of cameras we've got here, we've got to limit it to where the real race action is. It's on the left-hand side with this man, Emmanuel Sella, who's looking to get back-to-back -back mountain top victories. But it's also there, the battle between Ricardo Rico, just going around the corner there, the best young rider in the Giro d'Italia this year, and Alberto Contador, who's thinking that at the end of this stage, he's got Amalia Rosa to put onto his shoulders. Well, obviously by his face here, Rico knows that Contador has put in a counter move. He has his little earpiece, so he'll know he's being chased. He thought he was gaining good time there, and I think now he isn't, and he knows it. And so he really, there is Contador, free to fly if he can, and hold at least his losses here. He's the next pink jersey of this year's Giro. Gilberto Simone, Denny Menchoff, Danilo De Luca and slowly but surely nailing back Contador. I don't know who that rider is just in front. That was Rico, Rico, Contador, and then well, Rico, Rico three. Has, um, has been caught, caught back uh, quite dramatically. And he knows that he's about to be joined by, uh, by Contador, if that's the case. It looked like the white jersey, I agree. And you'll sell up the final few metres here as he sees the road still tilting up ahead of him and he uh, is going to get to the end of what has been again another crusade i'd have to call oh. this for him through the mountains well the king of the mountains he certainly is now and all he's got to do is get to the finish in milan and that will be for him well, rico in fact has gone away again from alberto contador rico is still around the corner still on his own surviving he will not give up this man you can't put him down and now i think again a signal back to the car before he starts saluting the crowd. I oh, know he's pointing to them. I think he's just saying, we've done it again, boys, as he continues to ride up to the finishing line. And this has been a unique weekend as far as Emmanuel Seller has been concerned. The Alps and the Dolomites are in his back pocket, the King of the Mountains in his back pocket. Two stage wins on consecutive days. And uh, now what, he really is going to be welcomed over the line by his officials. Well, I don't think he can believe it. He was absolutely wiped out yesterday. He got himself back into form overnight and, uh, well, he's kissing the jersey. It's his now. I don't think he can be caught overall. He's swept everything before him. He's a true king of the mountains. Now the time will start and we'll see what it will be here. Well, that's going to be a couple thing. of minutes. There he is, taken away by the uh, Swaniers. They'll uh, mop him down and get him dry. Huge victory for the group Navagare. Well, they've pulled back here Alberto Contador into the fold, but still Ricardo Rico is in front of this group. And we are, we do believe that Domenico Pozzo Vivo is still in second place on the road, although we haven't seen... Well, there he ah, is. There he is, at last. Well, the poor man's been riding his heart out and our camera's never found him. There he is now, though, and he's still in second place. This is going to be arguably the best result that Group Navagari have ever had in the Giro d'Italia, first and second. Well, this young man here, Riccardo Rico, has uh, based his uh, approach to the Tour de France and the Giro d'Italia on Marco Pantani's style of racing. He's now about to get caught, though, because you can see the acceleration. Uh, and again, it looks like Danilo De Luca is taking off after Ricardo Rico and Alberto Contador, Phil. He really is suffering today just to stay in this bike race. At least he tried to grab the wheel of De Luca, but I think he just cracked. <laughs> he did. I he think said... he hit the wall there, and he's going back to Gilberto Simone. These last few hundred metres to the line are very steep here. And Menchov also struggling now. The clock continues to count. 
Uh, the winner is in and being toweled down for his second trip to the podium in this weekend. And now we're looking for his teammate to take second place. But Rico, I think, might be closing in on with this acceleration. I think that was De Luca. No, there's, there's De Luca. That was Rico. Rico, yep. in fact, is uh, losing a little bit of ahead. terrain now to Danilo De Luca, who sees this as an important moment for him to put time between himself and Alberto Contador. Here is Pozzo Vivo finally in the finishing Ooh. There's Rico. Right behind him. That's amazing. Pozzo Vivo, if he did, if he's looked over his shoulder and he's found the strength to kick again. Well, that saved the day, didn't it? But it is a 1-2 for Navagari. And the clock says it's going to be about 2.05. Uh, first and second, Domenico Pozzovivo. Rico comes home in third place at 2.11, 2.12. Two and not very far behind, Danilo De Luca. He looked dead all the way up the climb. He got away in the end to take fourth. And Gilberto Simone is leading up Alberto Contador just behind there, and he's lost himself uh, 2.26. I think he's done uh, just about enough, Phil, to get himself the Malia Rosa. No There's doubt about that. Big thank you to Simone, I would say, though. Menchov in as well. Yeah. And uh, Rico only gained a few seconds, seven or eight maybe. So he's still quite a way behind overall, as time will tell. This looks like Andreas Cloden. So he rode away from that group in the end. He ended up riding almost the whole of this climb on his own, and he's mm. picking up riders one at a time. And that's Julio Perez. Yeah. He was in the breakaway at the start of the climb. Now, he's been wiped away there by Andreas Cloden. Former king of the mountains. Bruce Jean has also recovered a fraction there as well, Phil. He'll be the next man to come around that corner. But this is Jürgen Vandenbroek, and that's not a bad ride by this young rider Again, from Silence another, Lotto. Another demonstration by Jürgen Vandenbroek that he's had a good weekend as well. Very few riders ahead of him. Menchov was just finished, so he'll be in front of him. There's Bruce Jean. Saved the day there at 3.20. Kept himself, I would think, high up in the overall classification. And I think that uh, looks like the shape of Paolo Salvadelli just coming in. That's right. I reckon that he'll still be a top three or four there, Marzio. But there's a look back at Ed Emmanuel, I think he said Eduardo, the Emmanuel Seller. Who kisses the green jersey. This time, I think it's his. And there's the result, as we saw it, his teammate Pozzovivo coming over second, Rico third, significant that, but in the end, time gains were not. De Luca only nine seconds back of him. And here's the man who held the jersey for a day, but what the heck, he's held the jersey in the Giro d'Italia, so Gabriela uh, Bossicio. While he knows Danilo has done the job for the team, he's happy to come in, nearly 15 minutes back. Well, as you say, Phil, that's not really important to this young man. At least he can write his name down his history as having worn the Malia Rosa. But this man can write his name down in the history books as winning back-to-back -back mountain stages in the Giro d'Italia and consolidating a very large advantage in the King of the Mountains classification. Everybody looking uh, on tentatively as to which way the champagne will go. Celebrations all round for Sella. King of the Mountains for sure, two-stage wins for sure. How high will he get up the overall? Let's have a look. Contador is the new leader. 33 seconds, though, over Rico. He did close in a little bit. De Luca third. Bruchesine just in there with fourth. Menchov now in fifth. Are we going to go? Simone's up there now. Pelazzotti and Sella comes into the top ten. Four minutes, 41. Well, the way he's climbing these mountains, that's not an insurmountable gap. But there is the pink jersey from the beach to the podium in the Giro d'Italia. And Johan Brunil will be feeling very pleased with Team Astana right now. Onward now to stage number 16, the individual time trial. It will take the riders up to a finishing height of 2,273 metres here as they climb up to the Plan de Coronas. And it is just under 13 kilometres, Paul. 156 riders still survive. Massive test for all the men at the top end of the overall classification, Phil, especially after two very difficult days in the mountains. Early starter, Jose Ruyano, is uh, going to go inside the time of Julio Perez, and this is a phenomenal performance by a man who we've expected for many, many years to be one of the great climbers of races like the Giro d'Italia. Well, the chance now is to show you this route because it has an unsurfaced section on it, which is almost 25%. And this is where we think everything will be decided. There's been no complaints from the riders about it. They just say it's probably the hardest time trial in the history of cycle racing. 
and we're going to find that out today I think there's the situation at the moment Perez there now two minutes seven seconds behind the new leader on the block Ruggiano Danilo De Luca certainly won't be enjoying this Phil because he's not one of the great individual time trialists and uh, you have to be a good time trialist and a good climber on a profile like today's stage Yes, well, the gravel section is just over five kilometres long. It's never been raced before. Here comes Jens Voigt bouncing his way over it. And again, Jens is finishing this race very strongly here through the mountains because this is a good ride. Uh, Perez, I guess because he's a good climber, sits pretty high overall, but Voigt just knocked him down the slot. Well, you know... Of his speed, Paul, 18 kilometres an hour. That's uh, around about 13 miles an hour. Alberto Contador, you can just see the... Uh, the injuries on his shoulder from a crash he had a little bit earlier on in the Giro d'Italia. And in fact, uh, a lot of people were saying that he may well pull out of that because of the accident, which I think has left a slight crack in his elbow. Well, he's the last man to go over the field now. He's in the pink. Win of the Tour de France. And now here he is on the Grand Tour and on course to win again. That's Pelazzotti on the right. His time checks are indicating as good. And it looks like it's him against Seller at the moment. Sella got the uh, green uh, King of the Mountain skin suit. He will uh, probably put in a good performance here this afternoon, but surely he must be starting to get a little bit tired after the two long raids he's had through the Dolomiti, as they call these mountains, before we finish off in the, the massive Great Alps. Bellazzotti on the right-hand side for many years has been regarded as a, a top contender for the Giro d'Italia. Very comfortable here, and I don't know what this problem is. A victim of the bad road, I would suggest. Just unable to continue the climb up the hill there, which is rather a great shame. Jürgen van den Broek just finishing, but his time didn't come up. Yeah, this is, a, this is a tough way to ride any time trial here. Well, They're giving him a time, so he must have walked his bike over the finishing line. <laughs> They're giving him 15th best time there as he came across the line. He must have had a flat tyre on the run into Towards the finish. Oh, here we are. That's where it happened. It wasn't a flat tyre, actually. There was another problem with his machine. It seized up. Oh, the oh, gears yeah. are in the wheel. Yeah, just at the top of the climb. Yeah. They were putting gears on here that you would actually use on a mountain bike because of that steep section on the gravel, and that he tried to rush across to it, and uh, not correctly adjusted, caught the spokes and ripped them off. Well, Pelazzotti, kilometre 7.6, riding extremely well, best time. No, second best time. Just 22 seconds adrift, a little bit further up the road, uh, Marzio Brusegin. Two stage wins in the Giro d'Italia, and strangely enough, both of those were in the individual time trial. He's a great time trial, listen, for him, a good performance this afternoon, Phil, could uh, pop him right up in the overall rankings. Well, on the metal surface here, he's looking pretty smooth here. Got a good rhythm going, he's got the big gear in. And he's rolling it very smoothly indeed. Uh, he's the man most likely to succeed, I guess. How much I'd like to arrive at a full beard on, though. That must be rather uncomfortable. Well, this is the part of the course you were talking about, uh, and it really is only used during the winter, really, for getting people up to the top of this climb. And here it really is a little bit of a test for the riders. I suppose you could call this uh, the Paris-Roubaix of the uphill time trial in the Giro. Yeah, it's not easy. They've, they've cut that road, especially for the race. It's never been used or raced on before, of course. Ricardo Rico now up to second overall, looking for 33 seconds today to be the next wearer of the pink jersey. Is he tired after his ride yesterday? He's still got the bad road to come here with no time on him at the moment. Really motivated, he knows that 33 seconds in a team time, an individual time trial like this is absolutely nothing at all. But Seller here has put in a sterling performance, he could very well challenge Jose Ruiano. Yes, so he's going to be the best time at the finishing line here. You can see little bits of moisture on the road, so it's not easy coming up to the service. He's got to hold in the saddle till the last minute. He's seen the clock now, and that's what's inspired him to a sprint, because the best time of 41.15 is about to be annihilated by the sensation of the mountains. Seller, is he going to win his third stage in as many days? Best time and in by 43 seconds, and he's just under 12 miles an hour average speed. 19 kilometres an hour, he's really raised the barrier for everybody. That is the time, I think, that everyone now is going to have to look at. No time checks yet for the man in pink, and this is Alberto Contador. 
theoretically, I would always put him down as a great favourite here, Phil. Now, let's see the time here of Ricardo Rico. He's not going to be the best time, second best time, 17 seconds adrift. But what's more important is his time compared to that of Alberto Contador. Well, he hasn't finished a pretty close to Samuel Garcia. He hasn't finished his best time there, possibly the sensation of yesterday. Another good ride by the Navagari rider as well. He's come in with the third best time at the top. Well, the surprise after surprise here coming from Team Navagare, but they've got first and third at the moment, split by Ruggiano. Well, Contador, he's gone through there, he's gone through ahead. Seconds. He's gone through ahead of Ricardo Rico, that's the important thing for him. But this is the easiest part of the course, it gets a lot more difficult when we get further up. He's still got that lovely low gear turning that, dressed completely in pink. And the good news, as you say, Paul, he's uh, pulling a little bit of time out of Rico, but there's still a bit of climbing to be done here. He's going to have to use all of his time trialling ability that he's learned uh, over the years, listening to the advice of one Lance Armstrong. You see the way he tickles the pedals. Uh, this is going to be a ride now by Franco Pelizzotti. Now, this is a good ride. Well, this could be, a, this could be the best time coming in here, Pelizzotti because Sella is in at 40.32. It's only just around the corner here. This is a new leading time. Franco Pelazzotti, to the cheers of the crowd, has produced a time trial of his life there to go top of the leaderboard. Six seconds faster than Emmanuel Sella. I tell you, this is a violent effort. The individual time trial is always a violent effort, but when you put it at the top of a mountain, here's a great ride here by Gilberto Simone, too. Well, are we about to see it reshaped again here, Simone? The crowd are loving this, but he's not going to make it, you know. He's going to be very close, but it's a little bit too far, certainly more than two seconds away. There's the time gone by. Seller's time of 32. I don't think he'll get that one either, so it looks like a third best time for Simone. Uh, and the time of Ruggiano he will achieve. So Gilberto Simone, who always rides well in the mountains, comes up with a third place finish at the moment. It's a good ride by Gilberto Simone, and that'll move him up in the overall classification. And he is uh, proving to be, even Phil, at 35 years of age, very competitive. Well, this is Ricardo Rico, not looking quite as sharp as he did perhaps yesterday when he was trying to get rid of Contador. Might be paying the price. You've really got to just sit down and hope that you can hold on this gravel road. It's fairly well padded down the hogging, but it's still a very rough surface. Denny Menchoff coming in. Again, a reasonable ride from him, but it's not a winning one. He's looking at Pozzo Vivo. Who, uh, yeah, I don't think he'll get Pozzo Vivo because it's only just around the corner, but Menchoff will probably get sixth best time here. And it's just going to be inside the time there of Jens Voigt, so sixth best time there for Denny Menchoff. But uh, it's a big battle between these two riders out on the road there. You can see uh, Ricardo Rico. I have to give the advantage to Alberto Contador, who, although he's looked tired for the last couple of days, this is the arrival of Marzio Brusegin. He's not going to win this one. No, no he isn't for Pozzo Vivo, though. Uh, he should better his time, but again, it's going to keep him right up amongst the leaders. Should hold his fourth place overall for Bushiji and uh, fifth best time for him. It's not really a great time trial, it's when it comes to the mountains, but don't forget, we still have a final time trial to come as well, which might swing it back in his favor. Now, head to head, racing for pink. These are the two riders we're concentrating on. Alberto Contador slightly ahead of uh, Rico as the killer comes up to the line again about where we expected him to finish I suppose seventh overall yes he's going to be seventh I don't think he'll be disappointed with that he's ridden about the same speed up this climb as Denny Menshoff so I think he'll be quite happy at the end of the day Alberto Contador he knows how to ride a good time trial I think that's the important thing Ricardo Rico is riding this on enthusiasm not a bad ride though these are roads that we might have seen at the start of the 20th century as Rico tops the top now we'll see what uh, Contador can do there he's 30 seconds off the fastest time that's not the point just now big effort by the Cobra now, has he lost or gained time? That's the question to Alberto Contador. Well, he slips into fourth place there. Contador looks as if he's going to put in a fine performance. He's not going to win the individual time trial here, Phil. He started the day with a 33-second advantage over Ricardo Rico, and I think what he wants to do is really try and build on that if he can, although he does know he's going to be challenged an awful lot over the next few days of racing. Well, this has been a confirmation, I think, of the pink jersey. He's gained a hatful of seconds, perhaps, as he comes up. He's looking at not a winning time. Pelazzotti's got the win here today. There's Rico's time, though. He's got a little bit of time gained back. He lost yesterday. 
So that'll do him nicely. It's a bit more psychological than anything, and the race will remain a matter of seconds here. But there's no doubt Contador keeps his pink jersey after the first day of defence. There's the confirmation. A win for Pelazzotti, his first win of the year. Remember, he led for four days earlier on. Now he's got himself a stage win, and in a time trial as well. That was extraordinary ride by Franco Pelazzotti, and a great result for Liqui Gas. I think that's an indication of the form that Franco Pelazzotti has got because before the start of this day I certainly wouldn't have put his name down as one of the favourites to win an individual mountain time trial but it's a good sign for him and it's allowed him to move up into fifth place in the overall classification while Contador now starts to stretch his lead to 41 seconds. Uh, not a lot of breathing space, Simone comes in at a minute 21, Bruce Jean holds fourth place exactly two minutes down, further back De Luca sixth. Menchov 7th, Sailor just continues to ascend from 10th up to 8th now as Pozzo Vivo appears on the top 10 at 5.25. There's the flag. I just wonder where the King Crown, which we normally give away here. I saw it being held. It may have gone over to the head of Pelazzotti. He's conquered the Plan de Coronis. There is Eddie Merckx trying to get on the stadium, uh, on the podium. Five times winner of the Giro d'Italia. I wonder what he thought of that finish today. We move on 146 kilometers now to Locarno for the riders in the Giro d'Italia. Franco Pelazzotti can take the rest of the day off. Well, moving away to uh, not too far away from where the World Championships is going to be as they come around the Lake Como through Lugano and uh, just on the border of Italy and across to the finishing line in Locarno. Joining the action here now. Just the one Tinkoff rider who is clear of the field and it's not going to be a case of change anything at all here overall. There's the big peloton who are looking to themselves and uh, Contador, a chance to stretch out the mountains in those legs. Well, I think for a lot of the riders who battle through the mountains, they've been quite happy with the way the race has unfolded today. Pretty much everybody has stayed together. Apart from this man who rode a sterling time trial yesterday, big Jens Voigt, he's going for the counter move. Well, we've had nothing in the way of mountains. We had one small climb at 112 kilometres. Francesco Gavazzi was over the top there. Mikhail Ignatiev from Tinkoff is the rider who was over in second place. And Seller didn't even bother, and I wonder why. I think he needs to uh, rest and recuperate a little bit before we get to the next big mountains. Ignatiev is the man who's still surviving, but only just here. As he continues to try, he's the last survivor of the breakaway, but I think the peloton have got themselves well settled in for a race to the line. Well, they've pulled back Jens Voigt there into the fold, and I think we're looking at not very much more than about five or six seconds. There he is, he looks over his shoulder, sits up nose. It's all over for him now, and I think we're going to be treated, Phil, to a very fast bunch sprint. Yeah, well, it's always a shame when that happens, and there are 146 starters this morning in the race. Believe it or not, half a dozen riders were eliminated outside the time limit yesterday which is arguably the slowest time trial we've ever had in an international Grand Tour. Anyway, they're all racing up towards the line and it's going to be a group sprint now. And, Paul, we haven't got many sprinters left in this race. Now, there's a lot of sprinters have pulled out, but one sprinter who certainly still is in the race is, of course, Daniele Bernati. That's why Liquigas have come to the front, but lining up right behind them there, you can see the big train now of Team High Road. They won't want to take up the pacemaking just yet. I think they would want to wait until they get just a little bit closer to the finish. There is Bernati over on the right-hand side. There is Paolo Bettini. He's still looking for a win here in the Giro. And uh, there you can see moving up on the left-hand side, Danilo De Luca and the Malia Rosa. Well, we still have Bernati in the race for Liquid Gas, hence the effort being made by Andre Noé. We do have Cavendish for Team High Road. Zabel is still in this race. He never gives up any he ever attempts and uh, it'll give perhaps some of the second level sprinters a chance to get through now with many of the sprinters not joining in and join the passage of the Dolomites and Team High Road really it must be favoured to them now because uh, they've got Cavendish right up there, Bernati's going through Bettini, why not Bettini in the World Championships jersey? Well, Bettini's been looking for that win. Uh, Daniele Bernati's looking to get himself points in the uh, King of the Sprint classification. That was how long a brief glimpse of what it's like from the back to the front end of the main field. Something happened to Bettini there. Yeah. It suddenly it wobbled and a gap opened. A touch of wheels and he was uh, very easily supported there by somebody who just put their hand on his shoulder there to keep him stable. 
But well, he think he's okay now. There he is with the World Championship jersey on, with the bands right around the middle. Well, that was a very fast straight there. You saw it was going gently downhill. It really did stretch out the peloton, but that was a bit of a speed wobble by Paolo. Anyway, Bernati has kept position. Team Hyro are in the driving seat here. They've got their demon sprinter, Mark Cavendish, who is achieving an ambition here by trying to get to the finish in Milan. Uh, which is what he wants to do, because thinking long-term, one day his competition will be for the points jersey of the Tour de France. little reminder of the cobblestones of northern Italy, as uh, brief as they were, as the train team high road heads into town. Well, they've got themselves uh, in complete control, but if they fail, you can just see the pale blue jerseys of Milram right behind them, and they will be looking after, of course, Mr Eric Zabel, who... May well be racing one more year or may well not be. The rumours are rife about whether or not Eric Zabel will continue racing for Team Milram going through to the next year. But here you can see the job of work that's being done by Team High Road. They want to get their man. There he is just over on the left-hand side, Mark Cavendish. But alongside him, Phil, there is, of course, the Mayo Ciclamina, the Ciclamin jersey of the points leader, Daniele Bernati. Well, it looks like it's going to be Cavendish versus Bernati again, the way it's shaping up with a slight intrusion from Eric Zabel. Still looking for that elusive victory and still in the sharp end of another sprint finish here. But Team High Road have got the firepower this time. They go into the last kilometre with three men in front of Mark Cavendish and Bernati, an awful lot of ground to make up. The sprint has started here now. There's still plenty of riders up front as now it looks as though again Eric Zabel is trying to make a run. And there's a little bit of a move here down on the back straight and it looked to me as though the rider there was Albert Ongarato. Well, a little out of position. He's looking for Eric Zabel. Well, he's still a very good lead out, man. He's got the speed. That takes the pressure off him. In fact, he's swung off there. He says, where is Zabel? I've lost him and he's given the lead once again back to the men in the white jerseys of Team Hyro. There's Cavendish in third position. Zabel's up onto his wheel. In fifth position is Daniele Bernati. Well, it's going to be left to Griepel to lead out Mark Cavendish. He's the second one now and now he's He's got the head of the race. No, he hasn't. He's going to wait till he's around this bend. Cavendish, the long, a sprinter's delight as you look down that home straight here. And now it should be a chance. Griepel is leading out Cavendish. Cavendish holding second. Cavendish actually looking if Bernardi is going to make a run. And if he doesn't, he's going to give it to Griepel. And he was waiting for Bernardi. Now that's an unselfish offer for you, Paul. Well, I think, you know, Cavendish could have taken the victory there, Phil. But you know what? The best way to be a team leader is to offer favours around now and again. And Griepel, I don't think, can believe it. And there you go. Congratulations. 1-2 for Team High Road. That is a phenomenal performance by the man from the Isle of Man. You know, that was very quick thinking, too, because he was looking over his shoulder to see if there was any chance they were going to lose that stage victory. And once he saw that his teammate had it in the bag, he just backed off. Well, that's how you return a favour. That, in fact, is Andre Greipel's first win since he won the Tour Down Under, where he got stages two, four, five and six. He also won the pre-race down in Glenelg in Australia as well. So he dominated the Tour Down Under, and since then he's been racing in the service of Mark Cavendish. You see Cavendish just watching here to see if Bernardi has got the speed, and when he realised he wasn't going, he said, why not give it to Andre? Well, I really would like to know if that was preordained or not, Phil, because, you know, it's around that corner with 250 metres to go. That's a very clever move to have a teammate on your wheel. They had one man led them into the corner, and I wonder if there was any communication at all. Cavendish looking around very, very confident. He knows if his man was going to get challenged. He had the acceleration still in his legs to get the winner. Look at the face there. That is joy. That is a great victory. Yes, and uh, I think it was a surprise, but I think Cavendish, I think he did absolutely the right thing there. He's made himself a great friend in Andre Greipel. A 1-2, whichever way you look at it, for Team High Road, they continue a most uh, unprecedented season. And Usuf there in sixth place, Gasparotto, the baller world in seventh. And there he is, the big German rider is back on the table as a winner again. So dominant in the early part of the year when he was uh, all over the Tour Down Under. He really was a phenomenal sprinter there. And I think uh, that was a very nice gesture by Mark Cavendish, Phil. And I wonder if Mario Cipollini would have done the same thing. Yes, a good question. We'll never know the answer to that one. Overall, no change. They're all in there together today. So Contador keeps his 41 seconds. Simone's third. Bruce Eugene Pelazzotti in fifth place. Two minutes five across the top five riders here. There's still time for a change and a good day for Alberto Contador, third day as leader of the Giro and looking a little bit more, I suppose, confident, happy. 
Sainz is enjoying himself now. He could very well be riding himself into form this year because, you know, he started this, I don't think, with serious ambitions. Well, he fancies winning the World Championship in Varese at the end of this year. Good chance to have a look at the route now. The race covers much of it, 147 kilometres from Mendrisio to Varese. And a chance, perhaps, uh, for another group sprint. There's not too many outstanding challenges on the route, race route at all today. Chance, too, maybe for a breakaway to make... Oh, <laughs> having said that, we join the pictures and Jens Voigt's ahead here. Big Jens Voigt. He really is a tough character. He's had a very quiet early part of the Giro d'Italia this year, but now he's uh, been looking for the breakaways for the last couple of days. And I think that performance, Phil, in the individual time trial has inspired him to uh, greater things here. Well, Jens Voigt is on his own at the moment. Uh, he's just uh, nipping off the release on his brake, I think. One well, moment he was rubbing slightly on the back wheel. Probably something to do with the way that he rides his bike because he was all over that machine, Jens Voigt. He's such a powerful character. And these are the chasers now, the Ensigatori, and they're trying to get themselves across. There's Giovanni Visconti, the former wearer of the Maglia Rosa. Yeah, now, Mazzincini. Now back in his uh, Italian national champions jersey. Rossicio is number three, and he's the rider who had his day in pink. Nice to see uh, that uh, the Italian champions recovered here. Sconti, from his early days of leaving the race, he led for a week. It's pretty amazing to see that we've got uh, three Italian riders who were in that breakaway, and they've been outfoxed and outwitted by a German rider. And that's uh, not an easy thing to do in the Giro d'Italia, to outfox the Italians. He got away from these three and uh, if he's free to time trial Jens then he's got a good chance because uh, he's not affecting the apple cart as far as the overall situation goes. Remember he's still got some mountains still to come, the Garbia Pass still on the menu here and of course the last day time trial. In fact in that chasing group there is uh, Daniele Bernati so he's a sprinter turn uh, breakaway artist this afternoon and just tagged onto the back of that counter move there as well is uh, course Paolo Bettini probably just trying his legs out I would say Phil on this course here because this is where he thinks he's going to try and get himself a third championship gold medal at the end of the year when it's in Varese. Bettini and Bernati would be the men to go for the sprint there Bernati would uh, have take the chance I think to get points in the Ciccolino competition. Jens Voigt will just want a stage win and this is his chance today and this is what he wants to do. He's a rider of terrific ability, but he has to choose his days, and when he does, he's a very difficult rider to beat. He's a strong beast, he's still got the power. You can see, even though his style is not smooth and fluid, it's one that really shows the power that this man is able to generate. This is Bossicio there, followed by Nocentini. And this is uh, Visconti, Italian national champion, and there's another group behind them at around about a minute and a half. Well, I'll tell you what, Paul, when he did fall off there, he obviously hurt himself in the pink jersey because now it's ten days ago and he's still got plasters on that scar on his elbow, so it's probably quite a deep graze he received there, I think. Well, Voigt is ahead and he's got a chance here, and if he can hold on, it will be a first-time win for him in a stage of the Giro. These boys were left by him, Bossicio, Nocentini and Visconti, so I don't see them coming back. Well, you can almost see the difference in the, the power that they're putting into their pedalling action compared to what Le Jens Voigt is doing a little bit further up the road. The front end of the main field is now being controlled by Tima Stana. They're not really concerned, I don't think, about any of the riders in any of the breakaways up front because none of those riders are really uh, of any serious contention to them. The pink jersey has caught a glimpse uh, right up near the front of the peloton. This is a day pink jerseys don't attack, they just watch and consolidate what they've got and let the rest get on with it and that's exactly what Jens Voigt is doing here today now. He's still one of the senior statesmen, 37 years of age, at least he will be in September this year. All the way down in the overall classification, 49th for Jens Voigt and uh, around about 50 minutes lost so far but he didn't come to the Giro d'Italia this year, Phil, to try and win it, he came to uh, Take advantage of a breakaway like this, and he's probably waited a very long time to be in the right combination of move. And once he sees his chance of getting a, a stage victory, he's grabbed it by both horns. I must say, the roads again not being the best, suffering from a hard winter perhaps. Uh, Voigt, uh, he's won the best part of 80 bike races uh, since he turned professional back in 1997. He does pick them well, I'll give him that. As he now heads up towards the finish, a little bit of a reshuffling of the pack here. 
We haven't had any indication of the gap, but it can't be more than a minute. Well, it is. Well, that'll be on the chasing on this bunch, group, though, yeah. I think. Yeah. 150 to this group. I think it's around about a minute, actually, you're right, to that chasing group of three riders. And actually, Felix Cardenas is in this group as well, the rider there from uh, Team Barla World in the red jersey, just swinging off the front. Meanwhile, up the road, Jens Voigt, his familiar rock and roll stars, he punches on those pedals. There doesn't look to be much action back here in Bernardi's group, I must say. And we don't know what's happening by that group in between, Bassicio, Nocentini and Visconti. These guys, I think they're just happy to get off the front end of the main field. It'd be a nice day for Daniele Bernardi to get himself a few extra points in that Ciclamino competition. And, of course, Sir Paolo Bettini was uh, looking for the win here this afternoon, but he's not going to do that, because I'm pretty certain now that we're looking at the win here for this man, Big Jens Voigt, because with a minute advantage, you just look at the way that he's riding. He's not looking like a rider who's weakening as the approach to the finish. Well, he's won two stages of the Tour de France. He's worn the yellow jersey a couple of times. He's worn the King of the Mounties jersey in that race, but he's never appeared in this race. And here he goes now, heading for a stage win. And this will be a very happy time for Jens Voigt. He knows now nobody's going to catch him. Those long legs are carrying him to another significant stage of his career. Looks over his shoulder. Yes, he says, it's ours. Yeah, he knew that he'd got that one then as he looks back to the team manager in the car just behind him. He knew that he'd made the right move at the right time. He's around about 500 metres to go now. One last check over his shoulder to see if there's anybody going to make that last-minute comeback. But I can tell you, gents, with a minute advantage, you really are pretty safe. And his team CSC getting something out of the race now. They just lost the two Australians. Stuart O'Grady didn't start stage four. Brad McGee crashed out on stage three. They're the only two to have gone from the team. And this rider now flies the flag proudly down the home straight. A pink jersey, not even in his wildest dreams, but the first prize on the stage of the Giro most certainly is. Well, a great win by Jens, and I think a very popular win. He's one of the most popular riders. In fact, he spent a lot of his career being the rider's representative to the International Cycling Union, and also he puts a, quite a lot back into the sport. Here's the next group on the road, the, the three riders, three Italians who've been outwitted today by the big, strong German. Well, they've survived. Now, Visconti, when he's not winning pink jerseys, is usually a pretty good sprinter, so let's see if he can finish it off here. I don't think Bossicio... Interesting, Visconti and Bossicio both have held the lead in this race, and here they are in a three-man sprint for second place. Must be quite a complex for Ronaldo Nocentini. The three Italians having a little dive, and there you can see the power of Giovanni Visconti. They're not going to get over the top of him. He's got a measured sprint here, long way up the straight. A little bit of a challenge, but not coming anywhere from Nocentini. And Bossicio will be the fourth-place finisher on the stage. Meanwhile, the sprinter of the race is in this group. Well, Daniele Bernati will be looking for a few points there. He's got himself onto the wheel there of Paolo Bettini. Bettini really showing off his World Championships jersey as the sprint starts over on the left. Well, he's going to time it. I can't believe anybody's going to beat him, but he would be taken on by Bettini. But now he's showing his skill here as he gets to the front. Shoulder to shoulder with Bettini. <laughs> and he says, go on, you're faster than I am. And so he gets the points for fifth place. But the man who got the glory on the day is Big Jens Voigt. He really is a jovial character, and if you ever get a chance to talk to him, he's, uh, he's got the most Australian accent I've ever heard on a German. So, Voigt is in, as he finally left his mark on the Giro d'Italia. Minute seven, he was ahead of Visconti, etc. Two minutes four, when Bernardi brought the boys home in fifth. And uh, are we going to see where the peloton finished? It's really of no consequence, really. Oh, they haven't finished, that's why we haven't seen them. Here they come, and seven minutes has ticked by. It's Levi Leipheim was on the front. Obviously, now Team Astana have got to take this race very seriously. It's their responsibility to keep the race going along once the breakaways have gone clear. There's Leipheimer pulling off. He's done his job of work for the day, keeping his man uh, Roberto Comptador comfortably at the front end of the main field, and here's Contador leading him home. Well, that is a cheeky move by Alberto Contador, as if uh, he put the fighters on everybody, and they come in at 7 minutes 53. And Contador is warming to the occasion. Well, tomorrow he's got a few mountains, which might keep him warm as well. 
Jalen Voigt not really worrying about what's on the menu for tomorrow. He's going to enjoy the moment as a first-time stage win for him in the Giro d'Italia. Almost went off stage there. Well, he doesn't look as if he's uh, spent a long day in the saddle here this afternoon, does he? No, he never does. When when you win, you feel good, that's for sure. There's the overall, no change at all. Rico Simone, Bruce Jean Pelazzotti. Still more mountains in a time trial to upset that order of finishes. Well, Alberto Contador will know. It's his fourth day as leader of the tour now, heading into the middle of the final week. Yeah, I think he realises, though, Phil, there's a lot of climbing still left to go in this Giro. Stage uh, number 19 now, and a long one as well. It includes uh, the Passo, Passo del Vivione, the Passo della Presolana, the Passo Montepora. Those three climbs of the day. And they will come, taking us through near to the finish. As the riders will make the way to Montepora, 228 kilometers. And it looks to me as though we're back into the action here with the Tinkoff team. Well, they've been a very aggressive team. Uh, once again, this is Vasily Kirienko who's got himself into the breakaway. Not sure what's happening here. But, well, the rain is back, that's for sure. And there's a, a shot totally wild on the cobbles there because they're so glacial. Well, that looks like Danilo De Luca, who actually has yeah. made a little bit of a move here, but he almost lost it going around that corner. Touches the back of the rider from Liquigas. We're looking at inside of five kilometres to go here, and this is the big move by Danilo De Luca, trying to ride himself, Phil, back into this race. Well, he's never stopped trying, and I'll give, it, I'll give him that, and I also think he's ridden a superb race as a defending champion. He's really hurt himself to stay at the front end throughout. Well, the man with him is uh, Vincenzo Nibali as well, and he will cooperate with Danilo De Luca. And I think that will put the cat amongst the pigeons a little bit for Team Astana because they can't allow little bits of time to be grappled away from them. There is uh, Alberto Contador, followed by Emmanuel Sella. He's a fairly easy day today. He hasn't really had to defend his lead very much in the King of the Mountains classification. But uh, for Team Astana, that move by Danilo De Luca has really put them under a little bit of pressure. Well, the final weekend, which starts tomorrow, big mountain stage, and then the last day of the time trial, there's still plenty of room to upset the overall standings here, and De Luca's having a little dig today. There's Contador. It hasn't been a great day for Contador, although he's managed to marshal everything. This is Kirienka trying to give Team Tinkoff a second stage win. Well, he's got himself uh, at least a five-minute advantage at the moment, Phil. Uh, these two riders, I don't think, are riding for stage victory here. What they're trying to do is race for a podium position, or at least definitely in the position there of Danilo De Luca. In Sugatori, they are the chasers at the moment. And uh, you can see that although this has not been one of the most difficult stages, it really has split up the front end of the main field. There's Contador. Not a lot of teammates with him at the moment. No, legs are getting tired. And by the way, Julian Dean of New Zealand didn't start today, so another sprint has gone, but there's no more sprints left now for them. There's no final day sprint this year. It's a time trial that will finish this race off. Well, the man who has managed to stay in there to support Alberto Contador, in fact, is Andreas Cloden. He's just sitting on the front end of this group. I think he's enjoying riding for Team Astana here, especially when they've got the, the Malia Rosa in the midst of the team. Well, the weather hasn't been the best on this year's Giro, and today is no exception, I'm afraid. And these streets look rather narrow, and I'm hoping that centre of the road is not a trough uh, to drain away the surplus water, because it would be quite dangerous if it is, but the riders are choosing to ride right down the centre of it here. Well, that's the smoothest part of the road, I think, just mm. moving up there. I think that was Ricardo Rico. He's wearing a, a yellow Sonia Duval jersey over the top of his white jersey as the best young rider. Yeah. Oh, there we are. He's taking off. <laughs> Thank you. On cue, just for me. Now he's looking to throw it away. He wants to give it to the cameraman. All the bottles are being unloaded. There must know something we don't here because they're lightening the weight for the ride to the finish. Contador working very hard. But I just have that feeling he hasn't had a great day today. His face doesn't look as cool as it normally does. Well, it's a lot of pressure, you know. He's uh, had to defend that jersey. Fortunately, it was a reasonably easy day yesterday. This is Gilberto Simoni. And Cardenas who's also had a good tour here in the absence of Juan Mauricio Soler because he was to be their big man for the Giro. Never got a real look at it. But this is a bit of a problem because Gilberto Simoni, Phil, is not in the group. In fact, he's been left behind from the group, so he's going he's to take a real vault down the overall classification tonight. 
Well, he, you know, he's a past winner of the Tour, obviously, but he's done more podium finishes than anybody, I think, except Felici Gimondi. But he does make mistakes. Well, do you think um, El Falco lives in this region? <laughs> well, he won't be far away by the look of it. Well, this is Simone here. He's been unhitched because the cars are going by there and Cardenas isn't going to be much help. Seller would like to get rid of his jersey. He's looking for a domestique to give it to if he can't find a team car. Oops, there we are, giving it to the boss. <laughs> giving it to the race director. Yeah. Well, all of these riders now know there's a little bit of a nasty climb up towards the finish line. And they're just sitting on the front, Andreas Cloden, riding away, ticking out the tempo for his team leader, Alberto Contador. There's the second group on the road. That's Danilo De Luca. He's looking for some time here this afternoon and maybe a podium position down towards the end. He knows he needs a lot of time to pull himself back into this race. Well, there's Felix Gardani sitting on the back wheel of Gilberto. And it looks as though Gilberto isn't quite as sprightly as he was now. Cardenas really doesn't care either. De Luca's on his own. Yes, and the rain is getting heavier. It looks as if he's got rid of Vincenzo Nibali. Now he's uh, taking off on his own. And I don't think there's any chance at all that he can pull himself back into this race because he's looking to bridge a gap of around about five minutes to the lone leader, Kirienka. But what he is trying to do is get himself time over Alberto Contador and the rest of this bike race. He really is a tough competitor. He really will fight, I think, Phil, right the way up to the end of this race. This is a great move by uh, Danilo De Luca here. 2.15 to the group Maglia Rosa. That is a significant time gain, they're saying now. That's right. He's free to fly here, and if he can build on this, he is back in this race as a contender again. It'll be an interesting overall with the final weekend to come, and I think Danilo De Luca, probably because of the mountains tomorrow, has thought, ah, they won't watch so hard today, and he's giving it a go. Well, it's a clever move as well. He's sixth overall. He's looking for two minutes and 18 seconds on the Malia Rosa. I just noticed Vincenzo Nibali wasn't too far behind, but yes, Phil, today they are actually putting pressure onto the shoulders of Alberto Contador. Isolated here with only one teammate left to help him. And, of course, in that group, a lot of Italians, who I don't think are in a situation like this, coming down towards the end of the Giro d'Italia, are going to help a Spaniard to win their race. All of a sudden... He is the virtual leader of the Giro on the road, and that is something I don't think anybody would have expect expected today. De Luca, last year's winner, is looking for pink tonight, and I think that journalist on the left of the road just realised it. I think he's just given him that little bit of information that at five kilometres to go, he's in a situation where he could be turning the tables now on Alberto Contador. He's a former winner of this race, and look at Contador. Well, he should look concerned, and he is, because he's losing that pink jersey right now. But he won't panic. You know, he's got some very serious team managers alongside him. Johan Brunil knows all about situations like this. He will be giving him good, sound advice, and I wouldn't be surprised to hear that Lance Armstrong is probably watching this live in the United States and offering his advice too. There's the team manager coming up alongside him, and if he needs to go to the front and do the pacemaking himself, I'm sure he will. Well, this is the move which was planned by Danilo De Luca today, and it was a plan to try and surprise and steal the pink jersey in the Giro d'Italia. Three kilometres to go, there's still time for more seconds to be added. This is the leader, let's not forget, Vasily Kirienka, he's still clear. He's a long way clear, by the way, best part of five minutes, so... Mind you, it's probably just as well. He looks rather tired right now. He's just going to say exactly the same thing. He's got himself onto the small chain ring. He's obviously suffering after a long breakaway now. He should stay clear up until the finish, but you never know. The way he was riding there, he was going about half the speed of the man uh, chasing him, Danilo De Luca. 2.8 to go, and uh, they're rightly getting excited with a second stage win on the horizon. A reaction coming now, Contador who's trying to uh, put the, the pink jersey back on his shoulders because moments ago it was switched over to the shoulders of Danilo De Luca and he's got to react now because there's still time to save the day. Well, you see how clever they were, Team Astana. They used Andreas Cloden right up to the maximum, then all of a sudden, as a true champion in the lead in a bike race like this, uh, Alberto Contador said, right, there's only four or five kilometres to go to the finish. I'm going to finish this off. And uh, what he really has to do is take the responsibility of chasing. Dangerous times this for Contador because he's taking with him there the Cobra. Rico sitting on his back wheel. Remember, Rico only needs a hatful of seconds, just over half a minute. And he might jump him on the run-in and try and snatch a few back. Well, that time gap of 2.04, I'd have to believe, is the time gap between Danilo De Luca and this group. None of the Italians want to work in this group now. They're leaving all of the pacemaking there up to Alberto Contador. Over on the right-hand side, Denny Menshoff 
They're leaving it up to the Spaniard to do all of the work. Marcio Brusegin put into difficulty from that attack now, Phil, clawing his way back into the group. And with it holding on to fourth place overall, as Sella goes up on the inside, is there a chance of a reaction? That'll be something Contador wants to see this time, and this time he's not letting him go, he's going to use him. And that's a good move, he'd be delighted with that attack by Sella. Well, every four or five seconds that he can pull back keeps him uh, just that little bit closer to the regaining the Malia Rosa. But Danilo De Luca today is absolutely on fire, and the big sprocket that you can see there just goes to indicate this is not a flat run in towards the finish this afternoon, and that may well turn the advantage towards the climber, Alberto Contador. Well, good for him. This is a great move by Danilo De Luca, and it's forced the Malia Rosa of Contador and Sellers going again, followed by Rico. Rico's looking for the seconds. Remember, Contador's alert and jumps straight into third wheel. It's hurt Jürgen Vandenbroek. It looks like they've uncoupled him. Well, I'm not so concerned about Jürgen Vandenbroek. I think he's got an awful lot of Giro d'Italia's ahead of him. He's learning a lot about how the run-in happens in a big stage race like this. This is the Gruppo Malia Rosa. They're looking to try and reduce the deficit they've got on Danilo De Luca there on the left-hand side, who doesn't really look to me as if he's a man who's weakening. And if they start to mess around like that in the group on the right-hand side, Phil, I could see Alberto Contador losing a huge chunk of time. Well, I'll tell you what, this climb is turning out to be a little bit of a brute. Uh, Pelazotti is also in this group, just for a glimpse of him. And Sella's Sella. going again. He's got to be tired by now, sure. And meanwhile, back at the front, we've got Kirienka here. He's uh, very, very tired after his long breakaway, but nonetheless, he's still looking good for the win. An attack there, is that Simone, Sella. who's giving it a go? That's Sella going again, and Alberto Contador has seen that as a dangerous move. He knows that Sella is the closest man to him. But that's Rico at the front in the white jersey. So Rico and Sella has tried to counter the move. This is where Rico, we expected Rico to put the move in, because a few seconds back would be invaluable now with the big mountains tomorrow. And Contador is being hit at all sides. This is turning out to be a very difficult stage for the race leader. And he's being hit from all sides, and he hasn't really got the response. He hasn't got the response. He is very much on the defensive. Uh, Ricardo Rico is looking for just 41 seconds. That's Emmanuel Sella in second position. Rico has flown the coup. Well, this had to come because he was following wheels and waiting, and now his plan is to snatch seconds. And uh, he's, if he keeps going like this, he's going to get De Luca in his sights as well. Kirienka, I still think, is nearly five minutes in front. We're well, only getting time checks on the chase. Well, Kirienka is, in fact, uh, struggling quite a lot here, but this is a great move by Ricardo Rico. There's somebody at the side of the road there, just looking to see what the position is of Danilo De Luca. Take your hat off to him, because it's been a superb attacking ride by Danilo for a moment, and might well still be the race leader on the road. Contador relied heavily on the scurries there of Seller, who does look tired now. And I have to say that Rico's was a totally predictable attack, and it looks as though he might grab a few seconds. Just in that group as well, it looks as if uh, one man has uh, disappeared once again, and that's Marcio Brusegin. There is Ricardo Rico. He's looking for the Malia Rosa here this afternoon, just looking for seconds to pull away and see if he can pull himself that little bit closer to Alberto Contador. He's got half his, half his uh, disadvantage back there, I would think. But it looks as though Alberto may be recovering again. He's uh, waiting for another attack by Sella. Well, I think he's uh, riding a very sensible race here. He knows that this part of the course is to his advantage. He's not going to see this man again, though, because he's still hovering on around about a five minutes advantage, I think, over Danilo De Luca. It was six and a half minutes advantage a few moments ago, but he's a man who's uh, now just trying to survive off the front end of the main field because at least he knows this is the Testa de la Corsa, the front end of the bike race. Well, Kirienka, this is uh, Gilberto Simone, this is Enrico, rather. And he's got the gap, but now I'm just wondering if he can hang on to it. Three stage wins overall in the Giro d'Italia, had a couple this year. And a few seconds, it's a good move. Probably hampered a little bit by the attack of De Luca. There's a flam rouge for Kirienka. He doesn't have to worry too much now, Phil. He's got that massive advantage, I think, over everybody else in this race. Danilo De Luca, though, is trying to write himself back into the competition. Kirienka came into the professional world back in 2004, a small professional team, and then he lost uh, his contracts for a year. He became just an elite rider, a 
And now finally Tinkoff have given him a try. They used him last year, got a couple of wins last year. But he's never got any wins like this. And there's no way now he's not going to win a stage of the Giro d'Italia. Rico still smelling pink, but I don't think he's got enough gap. And I, I think Contador's doing just enough on a bad day uh, to hold his two major rivals within reach. Well, Contador, I think, is uh, pretty much controlling and orchestrating the situation here. I don't think he wants to give uh, Rico any time, though, and I think he would be a lot happier if he pulled this all back into the fold. Looks like uh, Van der Broek has got himself back into the group there as well as Menchov. Which is an in indication they've slowed down there. He's back, so De Luca may be pulling away again. Rain at the top as he comes up towards the finish. This is the big moment then for Vasil Kirienka. Shortly to be 27 years of age and finds his biggest success here on a, what is a, a semi-mountain stage today of the Giro d'Italia. No big climbs, but as so often happens, it's been quite a decisive day. Certainly has a little bit of help there coming from Pozzo Vivo, the rider from Navigari, who's turning out to be quite a revelation in the Giro, but nobody's taking the glory away from Team Tinkoff looking at their second stage victory in this year's Giro. Very, very successful result for them. He's done it the hard way and the long way, six and a half hours plus in the saddle today. He's been in the lead over the mountains, been riding well on the climbs, and now he stayed and stuck to his guns and ridden home alone. Must be a wonderful feeling for him. A 26-year-old from Belarus gets the victory. After six hours and 37 minutes in the saddle, that is an awful long day on a day the where behind him there's been some serious battles for the overall supremacy, but for him, he takes another win back to Russia. Now, as he moves away and enjoys the await of handling that large bottle of champagne, let's look see here as though De Luca has been caught here by somebody or somebody up the road. No, I think De Luca is just about to catch one of the survivors of the early morning breakaway oh, yeah. here. He's yeah. just coming around the corner. That looks so uh, very much Effenkin. like Effenkin. Yep, he was in the breakaway earlier on. So, in fact, what has happened here is that, in fact, Steve, Steve Cummings, Cummings, he was in the break yeah. as well. I think he's already been overtaken by uh, Daniel Again, the camera's not covering all the breakaways once Kirienka went clear of them, but Steve Cummings, the British rider, doing a good ride here for Barlow World. He was in the breakaway, as was Alexander Epinkin, rushing on quick step this year. And De Luca has flown up from the back and has wiped them all out. Everybody except one, and that's Kirienka, but he's not really concerned, I don't think, this afternoon, Phil, about the stage victory. What he's more concerned about is the time between himself and Rico, and of course Alberto Contador. And that's what he's going to look at when the clock stops. He's racing for every second here, every second could count. The clock starts now. 4.35 on the clock for Danilo De Luca. Now, how long is it going to take for the big stars, Rico, and of course, Alberto Contador to come in? Efekim is in, Cummings will cross the line in fourth place, which is a terrific position there for the rider from Great Britain. Now, the next man in should be Rico, unless he's been swept up, but as we can see, he hasn't. And so the clock is counting now. De Luca will be moving up the overall classification tonight, whatever. Will he be in pink or will he be just up behind Alberto Contador? Well, Jürgen Vandenbroek has come to the front to do some uh, pacemaking. This is Cummings just surviving there for his fourth position at five minutes and 16 seconds. There's the face of Steve Cummings. Well done to Steve. It was a long breakaway and a hard-earned fourth place, but nonetheless, he's got it. Now, he's in. The next man in our picture will be Rico. Alberto Contador now taking the responsibility. There's uh, no help at all when you're the leader. There's Rico coming up to the line. He's looking for 41 seconds as well over Alberto Contador. So 5.44 is the time when he crossed the line. Well, now it's up to Contador. He's got two of his main rivals in the overall, and they're so far ahead that they've been in the pink at one stage, De Luca. Look at the face of Contador. He's got to forget where he finishes. He's got to drag these boys up. It is going to be very, very close between Rico, De Luca, and Contador for pink. This race on a day it wasn't really expected has really bit back at Contador. You see, he can't even go with the sprint for the line now. He's got to hold on to the group to get same time. 6.17, it's going to be close in the favour of Rico. As he comes up to the line, 6.21. Well, I reckon Contador will have kept his overall lead by one or two seconds and no more. But we'll find out, first of all, the result. Kirienka gets the stage, the Lucas second, Efekin Cummings and Rico in at 5.44.
Well, we'll have to wait and see what they work out here, but it's going to be very, very close indeed. Give this man his due and give Tinkoff a second stage win. Well, I tell you what, on a day when we were expecting uh, a breakaway to succeed, it did, but I don't think anybody expected this, and it's only, Phil, four seconds that Alberto Contador keeps over Ricardo Rico. Well, that is terrific now. Three riders as close as that throw, blanket over them all, a mountain stage to come, a time trial to finish. What a weekend now for the Giro d'Italia. Give us a smile, Alberto. Yes, because you did ride hard to hold even four seconds of your advantage over Ricardo Rico. And that's the way it is today. Now the weekend lies ahead of us. A massive penultimate stage from Loretta to Terano, over 230 kilometers, and it includes the climbs of the Garbia Pass, the Mortarolo, and those two climbs could decide this year's Giro di Sani. I say could because there's still a time trial to come tomorrow, but what a vicious final weekend, Paul. Well, that's what the Giro d'Italia, Phil, is really very much all about. And uh, have a look at this for the weather conditions when we get up to the summit of the Cima Coppi, the Passo Gavia here in the Giro d'Italia. The weather is atrocious. And this is Julio Perez as we look here at what happened after the start. He comes up over the top in atrocious weather and he's even going to bother to stop to put his cape on here. It's too dangerous to start riding no-handed. And so Julio Perez wins the prize of the Chima Coppi in this year's Giro d'Italia, former king of the mountains. And he doesn't care how much time he takes here. That was the situation over the top of the climb. Fortunato Baliani was second, and uh, Colom was over in third place. When he gets going, we'll catch up with the day's action before we get to the final climbs. Well, there was a big rumour they were thinking about cancelling this stage, but they've let it go on because this is really, I have to say, Phil, I think this is L'Etapa Rena, the queen of stages. There's Alberto Contador, happily ensconced at the front end of the main field, but what atrocious weather conditions. Well, I must say, it makes you think, doesn't it, uh, whether you want to be a professional cyclist looking at pictures like this. There are brave lots as they've climbed up there into disastrous conditions. It is the highest point of the course, and as you can see, we've come down now. This is the Mortarolo, which is a very hard climb itself. Conditions greatly improved. Just having a look to see uh, where this acceleration is coming from. This looks like Fortunato Baleani. You can tell by that smile of his. Is it a smile? Well, it's a grimace, I think, on this occasion. <laughs> this is Antonio Colom, and he's pretty much caught in no man's land, and I wonder if he's not been sent off uh, the front here to be a, an ally a little bit later on to Alberto Contador. Well, once I get to the top of this climb, it's at 175 kilometres, still a long way to go to the finish, but Baleani is trying to snatch the points. Notably, we haven't seen anything of Emmanuel Seller today. Certainly on the first climb, he was not in the results. Uh, Colom was third, Ricciano was fourth, Petrov was fifth, and Charlie Wilgalius, uh, the British rider for Liquigas, a magnificent six there for Charlie. This is Dalit Danilo De Luca. And, uh, not quite sure where he is either at the moment because uh, this looks like uh, Fortunato Baleani looking to kind of get himself a few more points. So that, that, that would indicate to me that Danilo De Luca, Phil, is in a spot of bother there. Well, that seller has come up with him in the red racing cape, so he has now put in an appearance, the King of the Mountains Virtuel. As he goes up over the top there, now the time gaps will start. It was Colom, Baleani, Sella, Rico was in that group and has gone over in fourth. So was Alberto Contador. This is uh, Marcio Brusegin with Jürgen Vandenbroek, but yep. the big loser is the man who climbed up into third place overall yesterday, and that's Danilo De Luca. I think he's hit a bad spot. Well, he gave it everything yesterday, and I think the Mortarolo is probably a bit too tough for him. Here he is, trying to get back into contact. Plenty of time to get back into contact. It's a long way to run to the finish. Pelizotti. And still looking back down the road to see what is the position of Danilo De Luca after an incredible performance yesterday, mm. riding right up high. And there he is. Well, he's still got the chance, Phil, yeah. to uh, make a daredevil descent and get himself back into this race. We will expect to see him come back once he can get the climb behind him, but you see the clock counting. Now, the clock is counting on the first riders over the top, which are Colin Baleani and Sella. Rico was already up there, so too was Contador. Everybody else trying to reach him, so a bad day it may have been yesterday for Alberto. Looks like he might be on a good day today. 
Well, he's keeping a very close eye, I think, of course, on Ricardo Rico because he probably feels he's got the measure of Ricardo Rico in the final individual time trial. He's a very good time trial as Alberto Contador. This is really, I think, the last chance that men like Ricardo Rico have got to attack the Spaniard. Ooh. Oh, dear me. That was a bit too enthusiastic, and I don't think he was too impressed with that, uh, Danilo De Luca. But De Luca here now has got a bridge two minutes up to the lead. It's not an easy call. Well, this is Colom, and he's a teammate of Alberto Contador, and I can only believe that this move, Phil, has been uh, to lay down the foundations of him getting caught a little bit later on and having a little bit of an ally for Alberto Contador because everybody knows that on the run-in towards the finish yesterday, he was slightly isolated, and that's a situation you don't want on a massive mountain stage like this. Well, that was the result over the top of the Motorola there. And as you can see, we've dropped down off the heights now, and the sun has come out here after those dreadful conditions on the Garvia Pass. This is Sella. This is Sella, and he slipped away from that leading group. There was four of them there. I don't know where he went. The camera didn't show us him going. He must have gone on the descent. I think he will have taken a daredevil descent. He's got absolutely nothing at all to lose. This is Gilberto Simoni. Yeah. Once again on a mountain stage, uh, very difficult to try and figure out exactly who is where. As far as I know, Antonio Colom is still in the lead. I've got a feeling it might be Sella who's in the lead now, Paul, and Gilberto Simone is chasing him. Because they've come together on the descent. We are hearing that, in fact, Andreas Cloden has retired from the race, so he must feel his job's done for Alberto Contador, because he's packed in. Won't be in the time trial tomorrow. There is yeah. Contador down there. And Colom, so yes, Colom must have sat up. Places. Yep. I think he must have sat up once he'd seen that he got himself over the Motorola and waited for his teammate, knowing that he would be a great ally. And yeah, now we are looking at a situation where I think we have Ant um, Emmanuel Seller in the lead with Gilberto Simone trying to get across. That's right, and we're just inside five kilometres to go, and the gap there is a minute ten, and it'll be counting on the five-kilometre banner. Bruce He's Menchoff. had a great tour, Bruce Eugene. He really has had a great tour. He's uh, ridden uh, very solidly in the time trials and he's defended well in the big mountain passes. As we get that little bit closer now towards the finish line, I think Alberto Contador must be starting to feel just a little bit more confident. I know there's an individual time trial to come, but uh, I would have to say, Phil, that going into that time trial with the Malia Rosa on his shoulders, he's got to feel quite confident. Well, this has been potentially a really difficult day, but it hasn't really come out of that way at all. The bad weather on the big climb rather neutralised the affairs. All of the dominating riders over the past three weeks were all together, more or less, and they got rid of De Luca. And so uh, it's working out well today for Contador. Menchoff is prepared to come to the front and uh, do plenty of pacemaking. They're all fairly well organised here. The man off the front is Emmanuel Seller, who's really creating a little bit of a surprise here. I'm just looking to see if De Luca has got onto the back of this group, but he hasn't, has he? No, I can't see him there. He's There's six, Ricardo nine, ten Rico. Riders. There's Rico in the white jersey, and uh, so Alberto Contador sitting at the back. From the big winner yesterday to the big loser today, it looks like for Danilo. And this man here, Gilberto Simone, is looking for around about a minute on Emmanuel Seller if he's going to try and get himself a stage victory. I think yeah. this may well be the last Giro d'Italia for Gilberto Simone as well, Phil, and what a way to go out. He's battling on one of the last mountain stages. Well, he's gone a day early for the time trial, I must say, because that'll wrap it all up tomorrow. And uh, Simone chasing Seller, two Italians one-on-one -on -one and not very far behind. We've got Rico and that group of riders, which includes Contador, it includes Abaliani, Brusagin, Valjevic, Pella Zotti, Denny Menchoff, that, uh, this group here, ten of them. But not Danilo De Luca, he has not come back on the descent. Well, in the back of that group, I have to say, is the major revelation for me, Pozzo Vivo, in about third position from the rear. He's one of the Navigari riders who really has ridden an incredible Giro d'Italia. Here's the Malia Rosa, looking a little bit more confident and not under the pressure that he was under yesterday. No, he's come through what I think was his bad day yesterday, and in fairness, he's ridden through it well. He knows when to suffer, Contador, and he can suffer when he has to. Well, uh, there was another rider in front there as well. That was Joachim Rodriguez, the Spanish national champion. So he's currently in third place on the road at the moment, and he's trying to get himself across to, of course, Gilberto Simoni. This is the, the premier group here with all of the podium in, except De Luca, who is going to slip away here. He could well put Brusagin up at the third place overall with a one day to go on the eve of his favourite event, the time trial. He's heading for a podium finish if it stays this way. 
Hotel Selop in a not very conventional style here at 1.8 kilometers to go. He's really using a massive gear to try and keep himself off the front of Gilberto Simone. This man, it looks like he's going to walk away with three stage victories. And isn't that funny? He's on the left-hand bank and the chasers are on the right-hand bank. Well, I must say that Seller has had an incredible Giro d'Italia here. If he gets three stage wins and the three most difficult stages of the race, second on the mountain time trial, which was probably the other difficult stage, and a natural enough, he's the king of the mountains as well. What a race that a man has had. Brusagin, not scared at all. I think Brusagin Phil may well be riding because he knows that Danilo De Luca is not in the group and he will, uh, may, may, mean, he will main, mainly gain himself an extra place in the overall classification. Emmanuel Seller is heading in towards the finish now, and he's got himself the race lead again, not overall, but the race lead on the day that will lead to victory for him. He's won uh, a couple of stages already. He won stages 14 and 15. Here we are now on stage number 20. And he's going to uh, walk away from this race with the King of the Mountains title as well. That's the green jersey. He's into the finishing straight. The Ultimo Kilometro, he's got his hand in the air. He's starting to celebrate very, very early on this occasion because he knows he's got around about a minute advantage over Gilberto Simone, and Simone's not going to wipe that away in the last kilometre of this race. Another wonderful feeling for this rider. This Tour of Italy has been one exceptional race for him. Nearly seven hours, the longest day of the race. Shakes his head in disbelief. He can't believe he's about to give us his kiss of the ring finger again and pointing at the green jersey, but I reckon he will be in a second or two. As he races up the home straight and the third victory for his group Navagare as well. Tremendous result, a massive crowd here cheering him all the way home. And there's Simone, he's in the same, almost in the same straight, but he's not going to catch him. Well, no, he's in the same town at least. Yes. A great finish for Gilberto Simone, who's going to make a little bit of a leap up the overall classification here this afternoon. And He'll try and defend that in the individual time trial tomorrow, but Seller now inside of about 30 seconds from getting himself his third stage victory. I can't see him up the road, but we probably could. There he is, he's approaching the finishing line. Gilberto Simone's under the kilometre kite, so we're just about a 900 metre advantage, I would say. And big smiles, I think the smile might be tears a little bit there. He can't believe he's got three in a row. Yep, I not think quite in a row. Not, well, in the mountains anyway. 700 metres to go for Gilberto Simone, who's still riding uh, at an exceptionally good pace. What he's trying to do now is uh, this is uh, Joachim Rodriguez. He's in third place on the road, and he's looking to see whether or not he can get onto the tail of Gilberto Simone. I think Simone, Phil, has done this to try and consolidate his position in the overall classification. He may well have thought, though, early on that he was going to get himself a stage victory. Well, that would have been uh, something he would like to have done. He's lost all hope now. He won't win the time trial tomorrow. That's for sure, but he's going to hang on for a second place here. He's being chased all the way by Joachim Rodriguez. There he is, about 10 seconds back of him, but that'll be enough with 150 metres to go. So, Seller home first, and then Simone comes home in second place for Seramenti, former winner of the Giro d'Italia a couple of times. In fact, Rodriguez, the champion who's been in our pictures really from day one. Uh, of this year's Giro coverage, and he gets a deserved third place finish. Well, here's the big sprint behind there, that's uh, Marzio Brusegin on the front. Rodriguez looking over his shoulder, he's comfortably going to get third place and honouring his national champion's jersey. Rodriguez only just got in there before the sprint started. Let's see, and this is Rico is launching, and Contador locks on limpet like. Everywhere Rico goes, there'll be no. Oh, and there's been a crash there too. I don't know what happened. Should never have happened in a small sprint like that, but two riders down. Foto Vigo oh. and uh, Vandenbroek. Vandenbroek not too happy with uh, the young man. Foto Vivo. Well, they'll have time to get in. They'll get the same time anyway. They're trying to... Uh, a little bit of inexperience there, I think, and yeah. panic at the end of a long mountain stage. Well, his bike's obviously done for, so he's got to get in. Well, there's his teammate. He's happy enough. Well, he certainly should be happy with three stage victories to his credit and the King of the Mountains classification and a high finish in the overall standings. Uh, when you think, as we went into the mountains, Phil, he was 24 minutes behind, and slowly but surely he climbed up in the overall classification. Yes, a terrific result for him. Seller getting his third stage win of this year's Giro. Simone at a minute four, Rodriguez at 1.22, Rico and the group at 1 minute 30. That leaves it all now very much just the 
celebrations are happening here with Emmanuel Seller. It leaves it all very much now down to the final individual time trial. And I wonder if Alberto Contador has got it in his legs to extend his lead in the overall competition. This is going to take us into Milan in time trial formation. This time, 141 riders are making the journey. Contador is looking to hold that four-second advantage. I think it's gone back advantage Contador now at the time trialist. De Luca slips to seventh place now overall. And so that's a little bit sad, I think. Menchov, sixth. Vandenbroek, he wouldn't have lost any time in that crash. Holds on to eighth and Possevivo. Equal for him, he's in ninth. Alberto Contador now knows he's going to have to uh, count on what brought him the victory in the Tour de France last year, and that's a, a sterling final individual time trial. He, I think, over the years has improved in that discipline of the sport, and uh, tomorrow he knows he needs more than four seconds. Here we go, 28 and a half kilometres, the individual time trial from Cesano Moderno. We head down to the finishing line in Milan itself. There's no hills now, it's a flash test of truth. And four seconds, boy, I'd be very, very nervous going out last man, but at least you're going out last man. I think that's the big advantage that he's got. We're looking here at uh, Marco Pinotti. He's one of the riders from Team High Road, and he's uh, riding right down the middle of the road there. This, in fact, is Tony Martin, sorry. Tony Martin, three seconds uh, best time at the moment. 32.52 is the, he's in the finish, Martin. And what we're doing is we're just showing that the early starters here. And Tony Martin has produced a very good result. Team High Road continuing their great Giro. And so too is Mark Cavendish, because he will finish this race now. And he's proved to everybody he can go the distance. Yeah, I think that's what's important for the Giro d'Italia for Mark Cavendish. It was to get himself out there. Marco Pinotti, now we're looking at Marco Pinotti. We're just taking a, an early look there at the performance of Tony Martin, who really did set the banner extremely high. And now we're down with his teammate here, who is Marco Pinotti. Two and a quarter hours behind overall, but still a very good time trial rider. Pinotti is the uh, national time trial champion of Italy. He knows exactly how to perform well in uh, this discipline. It's a difficult discipline because it's a fairly short individual time trial. There's the arrival of Marco Velo, and uh, himself a former time trial champion of Italy, and he's lost uh, an awful amount of time. Yeah, no, no big performance there from him. That's a situation then when we wait for the big boys to get underway. Danny Pate is in there. He's sitting in fourth place at the moment, just 17 seconds off the pace. Good ride by Danny Pater, former uh, world is. champion at the under-23 level of the sport. Especially at this stage of the tour, because it means he's finishing strong. It means he's finishing uh, extremely well. Bradley Wiggins also posting a pretty fast time here down towards the end, but all the big boys uh, will be trying to win. Now, this is Daniele Bernati, and I was going to say, I don't expect a good ride from him, but this is not bad. <laughs> this is very, very good. Well, there's points to be had for that Ciclamino jersey, but I don't think he needs them too much, but even so, Bernati is inspired. He's had an excellent uh, Giro, and he's bringing the points competition to a close here. One day Cavendish might rival him, but not this time. Look at that, fifth place for Bernati. Yes, he'll move down a little bit, but that's still a great ride. Now wait for the arrival here of Marco Pinotti. The best time on the board is that of Tony Martin, his teammate, 32.52, and he may well push it extremely close. He's gone around the corner just outside of 32 minutes. Well, he won his national title after the disqualification for drugs of Luca Ascani last year, but he's proving himself that he's a deserved national time trial champion, that this could be the best time of the day so far. He comes up the long home straight, former pink jersey here in the Giro, and they were wanting a good performance from him on Team High Road for this three weeks, and he's given them one. He's going to sit and wait it out. Best time so far, 52.2 kilometres an hour, seven seconds quicker than his German teammate, Tony Martin. Well, that's the barrier now that everybody's going to have to look at. The Ignatiev of Team Tinkoff in 10 seconds in arrears, Wiggins 13 seconds in arrears, Danny Pate still up in the top five, and he's around about 15 seconds back. Calm, cool and collected, Alberto Contador, the four-second gap. Already underway now is Ricardo Rico. There he is, in fact. Well, not 
if you look at the position of Rico, he's sitting up uh, fairly high there. He won't be as aerodynamic as Alberto Contador, and I think Contador has the slight advantage, Phil, of starting behind him on the road. He can judge, he really, I think, only has to judge his time trial on one other rider in this bike race, and it's that rider right in front of him, Ricardo Rico. And he's underway now, the rider in the pink jersey. If he wins today, he's led it for a week. It was a Sunday when he pulled it on, and now he's finishing here in Milan. And Rico is thinking just four seconds. That's all I need, just four seconds. We won't know exactly how they're measuring up till we get a time check. Well, he's sitting up pretty high on the bike there. He's not one of the most aerodynamic riders. Here's the arrival of Jens Voigt. He's not going to win this individual time trial this afternoon, but once again, he's going to do a sterling performance. He's give it, as always, 110%. There's Danny Pate's time. It's in danger now, but I think he'll beat that. Uh, yes, Voigt has gone out to aim at Geron Thomas's time now of Team Barlow World. As he comes up to the line, he'll slot in in eighth place, but there's still a few riders to come home. Well, Jens doesn't care, does he? He'll fight all the way to the finish line, whether it's for first place, tenth place, or whether it's for 25th place. He really is a warrior. Still Panotti and Martin, the team high road, riding high. First and second at the finishing line. Edward Emmanuel Seller here, the king of the mountains, at the 10-kilometre check. Well, he's a long way, way down he's there, Phil. He's anymore. lost himself a minute and 18 seconds, but I think what's more important to me is the time check of this man against the time check of Ricardo Rico. As you said, separated at the start of the day by only four seconds. Frightening. But he's got his rhythm going now. He's a pretty good time trialist, Alberto Contador, and when you're in the pink, you're going to stick to it. Here's Bruce Jean. Well, he's a rider who might well be the only man who can upset Pinotti today. He could upset the apple cart as well. He's looking to keep himself in a podium position at the end of the Giro d'Italia, and he knows a great ride by him this afternoon is going to be extremely important, probably the most important individual time trial of his life. Well, he's on a podium finish, and that's pretty important for him. Third place would be magnificent in the Giro. This is not a great ride by Ricardo Rico. He's uh, probably going to be inside, well, it looks like he's going to be outside of the top 60 at the 10.9 kilometre mark, and that will give us the first indication yeah. of just how Alberto Contador is going to do. There he goes through. He's lost a minute and 16, but what's more important, Phil, really, is not that one minute 16 on the leaders at that point. It's his advantage or disadvantage over this man. I just can't see Contador, and we're going to find out now, oh, yeah. going down to the depths that Rico's gone. This has been a good ride by Contador. There he goes, 15th place, and uh, that is an excellent situation, 14th place for him. That is uh, meaning he's riding to victory now in the Giro d'Italia because Rico is a, probably going to get Rico in his sights if he keeps slowing at this rate. Well, this is the uh, virtual pink jersey classification at the moment of 55 seconds mm. between Alberto Contador and Robert and Ricardo Rico. Menchov coming in again, finishing uh, with thoughts of the Tour de France in his mind, I think, as he slips up into the final gears for the line. Vladimir Karpic, pretty good time trialist. He's 21st. Menchov is going to be slower than him. He races now for a 34-11. He might just sprint over the line and snatch 22nd place. Yes, he does. Does he? No, a bit further to go. That's a long he way up not. to that line. Huge effort, and I don't think he'll do it. He'll slot down one more place to cross in 24th. But still just about 50 kilometres an hour, the average speed. At the moment, Alberto Contador is riding himself more solidly into the Maglia Rossi. He's already pulled back almost a minute on the man in front of him on the road, Ricardo Rico, and I'm sure that he will be very happy about that. I would say he's not actually even riding this time trial to win. As we look here at the arrival of Emmanuel Seller, he slipped dramatically down the overall classification, but does he care with three states victories yeah. in the King of the Mountains? Listen to the crowd, they've appreciated these three weeks around the mountains of Italy. And that is a fine result for the King of the Mountains. He's smiling his way home here. Time is of no longer any import to him. The battle remains, but look at the gap now, Paul. The gap overall, a minute 26. Contador is aiming to try and capture Ricardo Rico here. Pelazotti, the shock of the mountain time trial. 
No, it's all gone, but he needs a good time for a top three finish. It all depends on how Bruce Eugene goes. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I'm seeing here. I think the result of this time trial, Phil, is down to the rider who's recovered the best from what has yep. been a very difficult ascent, ascent of all of the mountains. And all of these riders are not riding as fast as they might have done if there'd been one easy day before the final individual time trial. It's all really about recuperation from that massive day yesterday. First, second and fourth at, in the finish at the moment with Badley Wiggins, uh, Team High Road. And that's how it's staying just now. Now this will be an interesting one. We haven't had any checks on it, but it's not really a winning one, is it? He's racing for Paolo Sabadelli's 21st place going down. Well, this has not been the day. And again, another point, and maybe you're right, Paul, uh, Bruce Eugene, uh, for him, is an absolute flop in the time trial today. This is not the man we normally see. But is he doing enough to hold on to a podium finish in the Giro, which is all he cares about? And it's him or Pelazzotti. And it's going to be very, very close here. He's got to stay better. 34-16. He's in. He might just about hang on. There's Pelazzotti. He knows what the time means. It means he doesn't get a podium finish. Well, he was waiting there. He was hoping that that was going to be the situation. Brissagin, although he didn't have one of his great individual time trials, Phil, I have to say he rode a solid individual time trial, yeah. especially after the day that he rode yesterday. He's hanging tough in the mountains. Well, they're nearly all done now, but the two senior statesmen who have done battle throughout three weeks and started this day separated by four small seconds. It's all changed now. It's going to look in the record books in 10 years' time. Quite a convincing victory by Alberto Contador and uh, not the battle we thought it was going to be at the start of this day. Well, Ricardo Rico now getting himself into the finishing straight. He's been a great man in the mountains, but I think he's going to be a little bit like Marco Pantani, a great mountain man, but his Achilles heel is always going to be his individual time trialling performance. Just slipping inside of the top 70, 67th place for Rico. Yeah. He's lost two and a half minutes. That's a lot of time he's lost there to Marco Panotti, who's looking uh, set. He's just got to worry about the arrival of Contador, but I think Panotti may have won this, and that'll be a considerable victory for Team High Road as well. There is Contador, and you see he's coming up the straight here with a good finish, but way outside the time of Panotti. But he's coming up to win the Giro d'Italia with his first attempt. He tried the Tour de France at the second attempt. He won that. Now he's won the Tour of Italy. And his two-arm salute. He has won the Grand Tour. The man from the beach has just won in Milan the 91st Giro d'Italia. And a pretty solid performance after his uh, mountain escapes of yesterday, Phil, considering he really managed to finish inside of the top 20. And watch this uh, victory salute, because this is one you're going to see an awful lot of, I think, over the next few years. Yes, that's his custom salute. He fires the pistol, and he's got uh, two grand tours out of two attempts. Time trial first. High Road had a brilliant day. First, second, and fourth in the result. Ignatieff of Tinkoff, who had a good tour third. Van der Velde, slips into Chipotle, should be pretty proud of that as well. He started this race in the pink jersey. He finishes the last time trial in fifth place. But Marco Panotti was the man to do it. Danny Pate, another slipstream rider, in sixth place. Bernati, a sprinter, finishes seventh. Steve Cummings, an uh, Olympian Brit, has taken eighth. But there is the winner, Marco Panotti of Team High Road. Well, a great performance by that team to cap off the stage victories of Cavendish and of uh, Andre Griepel. They get the final stage victory as well in the individual time trial by the man who is the Italian time trial champion. And there is the final overall situation. Alberto Contada, just short of 90 hours here, wins in the end by a minute and 57. Bruce Eugene gets third, and there was virtually nothing in it. Poor old Pelazzotti finishes in fourth place, but he did lead the race for four days. Seller climbs up to finish in sixth. Vandenbroek, who crashed also there, is in seventh. Nibali, in the end, cracked a little bit, dropped to 11th. Leipheimer, we didn't see a lot of Levi, but he was very consistent to come home with an 18th overall. But Team Astana, banned from riding the Tour de France because of past demeanors not caused by any members of this team, are not able to ride the Tour de France, so they thought they'd win the Giro d'Italia instead. Well, they've done no politicking at all, with, at all with the Tour de France organization, Phil, but I have to say, I think their legs are doing the talking. And the points race, there really was only one man in this, 189 for Daniela Bernati, ahead of Sella, a climber, who got three stage wins and a second in the mountains. 
but at the end of the day, the white man wins. It's supposed to be a sprinter's competition, so a sprinter should win it. And he was a consistent sprinter as well, and I think he's going to be the new man on the block for Italian sprinting. He's going to get challenged, I think, by Mark Cavendish. Seller, unbeatable. <laughs> And there was not much here, it wasn't a photo finish there really, 136 plays, 63 points. Manuel Sella, one of the most dominant kings of the mountains, we've seen for many years in the Giro d'Italia. Yes, he says. Three wins, and a second, and a king of the mountains jersey to take home, and in the end, sixth place overall as well. Best young rider competition, Ricardo Wade Rico winning that by four and a half minutes over Jurgen van den Broek, uh, Vincenzo Nibali in third position there. Yes, and let's not forget Rico, of course, finishing second overall in the race as well. So, uh, he's another man for the future. He rode a good attacking race, perhaps his young leg didn't have the strength to finish off some of the moves he made, and they managed to claw him back. Uh, considerable consolation being best young rider and finishing second in the Giro. Well, he's got a lot to do in his time trialling ability, but uh, you can't have everything as a professional bike rider. Uh, Ooh, so Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry about that, madame. Yes, new dresses for next year, I think. And this is Bruce Yadine. He's very proud of that third place, and well, he might be, even if we do feel sorry for Pelazzotti. But Alberto Contador claims top spot. He must have had a shock two days ago when De Luca launched that attack and Rico followed him. But in the time trial, there was only one winner of the race this year, and it's Alberto Contador. 157 over Rico, 254 over Bruce Jean, and then right up behind came Pelazzotti, just two seconds off the podium. And amazing to think that just a few uh, hours ago it was uh, the closest Giro in history, and now all of a sudden That's right. it isn't. And there is a magnificent trophy. If there's one thing I'll remember the Giro d'Italia for, it's the size of its trophies.